Welcome to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios, episode 26. Joined by my co host AJ, all the way from Norway. What episode is it, AJ? 26. 26. <laughs> Do you remember when you were 26, AJ? Hey, what do you mean? You're the one who can't remember that age. Oh, <laughs> so rude, rude. Hey, AJ, um, um, did you know I'm uh, kind of a big deal now? The singing is going, just people loving your singing. <laughs> Simon Cowell just called me and said, is uh, Giles ready to do some auditioning? I met Simon Cowell. He tried to hit on Rosie, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He asked if she was, ma- if she was married. And then, um, and then somebody shouted from the back. This was on Britain's Got Talent. And somebody from the back of the auditorium shouted, she's got one down the front. Because I was sat there all mic'd up. And I was sat right in front of the producer. And I could see all the screens of the Why TVs. Why were you mic'd up? Because I was obviously the partner of the person who was on stage. Oh, okay, okay. And in fact, the guy that won was that magician, that Canadian magician. I think that was amazing. I tell you what, that was... That I was sat there and you couldn't tell how... So people, go to YouTube, type in Rosie Rascal Heart. Yeah. Uh, UK really Got good. Talent. Britain's got talent. Britain's got yeah. talent. Yeah, but anyway, so then um, Simon Cowell sort of turns around and I just went like this. I just went like that. I gave him the, watching you, son. And then he, and then he just, he looked at me, he smiled, and then he kind of underneath the table, he just raised his thumb like that. And I just went, <laughs> uh, you watch it, mate. You watch it. Yeah. What did she do on the American Got Talent? Oh, it was the, well, she was two weeks out from Britain the, the amateur. What? No, I said America Got Talent, but that would be even cooler, but. <laughs> yeah, it was two, two weeks out from the <clears throat> 2014 Arnold Classic. So, mm. um. So yeah, so it was good. It was yeah, it was a good experience, good day. Let long out, and do you know what it taught me? It taught me a lot about um, production values because obviously this is all my doing. <laughs> Everything. What are you looking at, Chris? This is. I mean, every idea. I mean, all this idea of the table. Um, I mean, all this backdrop. I mean, you know, I just the thing is we pay Chris so well. T- oh no. Oh no. AJ, shut that shit yeah. down, man. <laughs> shut that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all my idea, everything. Hey, AJ, um, anyway, anyway, uh, I, I quickly divert back oh, to it. But you learned a lot in production value. Yes, sorry, yeah, production value. Yeah, and I was, um, um, what was on the TV show I was, I was on? Uh, the right stuff. When you learn a lot about behind the scenes and how it all works and all the workings of it all, it's interesting. Did you use that in your Muscle Weekly? Like, I, any ideas? Uh, Did you learn anything? Or no, no, but they had me interviewing people backstage. At America Got Talent. Yeah, because there was like a green room and you're in there for hours and hours. And of course, you know, you know me, I need to eat every 30 minutes. Every, uh, every hour you start to yeah, get a little let, bit. Yeah, 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 let's not exaggerate. Remember, <laughs> you remember we went for KFC? Tell the people at home oh, one more time. I don't want to talk about Well, you can go back and watch the episode where I was vomiting on the in between guests. So what's been going on in the bodybuilding world uh, since? Uh, uh, hang on, oh, no, hang on I felt like I was something more there. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they had me interviewing people. Sorry, it's all about me, the show. Um, no, um, no, actually, back to my story. I'm, I'm kind of a big deal now, AJ. Superstar. Do you know why? Why? Do you know what? On oh, Instagram. The other, the other day, I uh, checked, because I've, I've learned how to do the stories now. You've oh, taught, you've I taught, taught me. I taught you that. Yeah, you've taught me a nerd stuff. When did you get Instagram? Uh, I got Instagram, it was about four years ago. And it took you four years to learn how to do stories? Basically, yeah. Then you know you're. But I didn't. Um, I didn't even have Facebook until 2014. And I think of all the media work I was doing, all the contacts. So <laughs> it's, it's all about me. The show. It's all about. So me. what happened on the Instagram? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, obviously now I'm a big deal. Big deal after 25 years. <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, uh, I was. I checked who was uh, looking and following my stories, and guess who I saw? Have a guess. Michael Bolton. <laughs> Episode twenty four. <laughs> no, um, uh, Chris Kale. Chris who? Chris Kale, dreadlock beard, who? guitarist, five finger death punch. Uh, the, come on. Man. Oh, come on, AJ. If you would send me AJ Carter or well, what? Somebody of what, what's high those, importance. What's those Backstreet Batty That's Boys? Nick Carter. Batty, that- what they call Backstreet, but not the Batty Street Boy. Back Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Nick Carter, that's the one. That's the one. Imagine if he went, oh, AJ, yo, bro, you, I love your stories. Unlike you, he's already done it. He did it, remember, on my Instagram. Did he? My first post, I had a Backstreet Boys, <laughs> t- no I had a Backstreet Boys t-shirt on, and he said, keep it up. Oh, Now, you've just completely rained on my parade now, AJ. I was really proud of that. I was, going to, I was getting my car serviced, and I squealed like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> no, <laughs> speaking about Instagram, uh, guys, uh, whoever DMs me about bodybuilding, I love it. You do, don't you? Have you seen it? I'm talking to them constantly because <laughs> in Norway, we, we, in Norway, there's, you, there's no bodybuilding talk. It's usually only men's physique talk. Mm. That's not. Um, although now we started to like oh, men's I'd physique. I'd love oh. to join in that, AJ. 
<laughs> can I join you? Can you get a group chat going and I'll I'll contribute? Giles <laughs> like no, but sponsored by Colgate. So it's usually only men's physique talk, and that's not yeah. my favorite type of talking. It's, it's not my favorite. No. So when I have people DMing me yeah. all around the world, and it's what's so good about bodybuilding is nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's just your opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's what, what you mean. Bodybuilding in itself is subjective. Yeah. So yeah, when we go yeah. back and forth, I love it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, and you try to debate with them. Yeah. And some of them are just you know Betty on the forums. Mm. He he used to have Charles Dixon winning. Remember two twelve. Yeah, well, Charles Dixon... No, he had him as the winner, not Flex Lewis. Oh, the Olympia? Yeah. And he went on back and yeah, forth and back and no, forth no, 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 and no. argued and posted pictures and... No. Yes. No, what, well, yeah, but what, what's the highest Charles Dixon's ever placed at Olympia? Sixth? <sighs> sixth? Yeah, but that's what I mean. Your opinion can matter. Oh, right, from, yeah, yeah. And he's followed bodybuilding for at least 15 years yeah, now. Yeah, but we all have guys that, like... I, I, I think the real fans are the ones that are the ones that, like... Someone gets seventh and you're, like, Biecki. There's a guy who's never made top six of the Olympia, but there's a guy, Lionel Biecki, there's a guy that, Sergio Just, Oliva, that even when they started, I'm, you've I'm, been I'm, championing them. I'm, them. I'm very frustrated with my man, Mr. Lionel Biecki. Microphone. I'm very frustrated. Just move it. Everybody can hear it. I'm very frustrated. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. frustrated, man. Why, why, mate, why? <sighs> Nothing's going on. I know. Nothing. Come on, Lionel. Come to the fold, mate. Sort yourself out. And with this situation help. with his sponsor... Now he doesn't have any sponsors. Mm. And there's... Uh, Why hasn't he come on the show? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, he needs to come on the show. I've asked him seriously over 80 times. I know. I know. I know. And Lino. each no, time I... he says Jesus will take care of it. So, Jesus, if you're listening... <laughs> well, I know he watches. Please every week. make Lionel Becky come to our show. I would really want him to come on. Jesus, help us out. He spoke to me last night. He said he watches every week. Jesus or Lionel Becky? Both. Mm. No, but seriously, man, I really want because ah, oh, he doesn't want to come on. It's oh, I don't know what's going, and it's no shows. I know, I know. And now he's aged. He's but he's dieting. He's dieting as well. All the I time, don't know what he? he's like, doing. I feel so for these guys that prep and then like say Haddy. Hadi will be prepping right up to like five days before a show, and then he finds he can't. Hadi Shupan, the two twelve, he finds he can't get to America to compete in the Olympia. But imagine all that prep. Yeah, I can't imagine. But Lionel Bake is a Mister Olympia winner contender. I would you say he's a winner? If if he would be on that Brandon Curry type of oxygen crew type of thing, yeah. Why doesn't he go to? That's what he won't come on. I want to ask. No, why doesn't he go to Kuwait? Well, come on. If he would come on our show, we could ask that question. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. I think is thing is we you and I we kind of uh, we we form bonds and and uh, acquaintanceships, whatever you want to call it, friendships. And you know, we 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 kind of genuinely want to help these guys. We want to help them. We want to help because I've got a lot of history in the in the sport and I've done a lot of different things. You're a huge fan of the sport. You have a very very uh, good insider's knowledge. You have good instincts and you're you're very smart. We know, and, um, uh, we know ep all epic the hands. Ep no, epic no, but hair. the point is, people don't know how much we really know. Yeah, because we talk to fifty percent of the current pros yeah. every day on all the details we know. Yeah, and we know, and we're also young enough to be a part of the streets. That means we're talking to the street people. Yeah. We're talking to the higher ups. We're talking to the sponsors. We're talking about the bodybuilding fans. We're talking to the judge. We know everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's very well, cool. Plus, plus people do confide in us. They give us information yeah. that they might not necessarily want public. So and we don't share it. Exactly. So that means they trust us. And that, that's a huge thing for me to be trusted by. But there people. is that one story. won't say it. But wow. Can you imagine if that came out? <laughs> if they made a clickbait video of that. Of what? You're gonna hint, or I don't know what you're talking about. About so and so being oh, caught with so, so and so. Oh, so and <laughs> so and so. Oh yeah, now it all becomes clear. So and so. Well, imagine if we went full clickbait video. No, yeah, but yeah, my I, my 25 years would it would uh, I, I wouldn't get a golden clock. <laughs> I'd, got, I'd probably get a golden Glock. <laughs> have you gotten anything for your 25 years of service? <laughs> uh, not even a donut, have you? Not even a donut. That you would throw in the trash anyway. I got but. I got the hole in the donut. They gave me that. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There, look. So when you had the tattoo job with two in your oh, cheeks no. and you had the hole in the middle to people to uh, penetrate. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, no. So I enjoy... The only thing I don't enjoy that's a little bit harder is when the pros uh, 
uh, come on my DM and are offended. Oh yeah. Uh, by think things taken out of context. AJ, AJ, you I I realize you're a rookie. You just delete them and go on, eh? You're a rookie. I've had <laughs> I've been in this industry for many 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 years. I think I think you've seen how I handle these types of you things. You just don't respond, do you? I just, well, I do respond. No, I do respond. Nah, not really. No, but I think most of them know to not even come to me with that. Because you don't respond. I do respond. Nah. I don't speak to them for five hours. <laughs> I just, I will respond, but I won't kind of, I don't know. I don't seem to get that as much because mm. I, I don't know. Maybe they see, I don't know. Why do they? Well, why do I they don't know. know. It's weird. I, know. I get it every day. Well, why did why that? Why did he say that? Why are you that? Uh, uh. <laughs> it's like, come on, bro! You're supposed yeah, to be yeah. training and I know I promoting know. yourself, not know. worrying about. Yeah, well, the thing is though, it's um, there's a lot. I don't even use the word ego or stuff like that. But I think some people just they just they're big fishes in little ponds, and I think sometimes the people around them say, "Oh, you're the best," and they do start to believe it. And I think really they don't have um, a lot of them don't have a hundred percent accurate perception with it being such a subjective sport. Don't have a, an accurate perception of how they are, where they. So I'm, I feel like I'm confusing myself. Here. Last episode. Yep. During the bikini talk, did mm. you? I saw you fall asleep there for a second. Uh, I was rest. <laughs> I was resting my eyes. AJ, I was resting my eyes. I, 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 I thought it, she was a lovely woman. Yes. The best representative we can have for bikini. Yeah, lovely girl actually. Yeah, yeah. I've never really spoke to her. I, um, I was. Met a, we didn't even meet her actually. I just kind of stood next to her with the Arnold. Uh, Mark Anthony. Yeah, he was great. Oh, yeah, supposed great. to be on for thirty minutes. We went for an hour because he was so cool. <laughs> yeah, gave us some nice insights. He yeah. thought Sadiq was better than Buendia. Your long lost twin brother. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I, didn't I really found f- that. As, uh, I don't now, know. You know my feelings on men's physique, AJ, <laughs> and you know that. Um, but I, I also know what I see, and I know that Jeremy Buendia is the dog's bollocks is what dog chris what is that dog's a bollocks dog? is that what is a hat the, the, ass of a dog it's it's like is saying or you want to call my man jeremy bondia AJ, aj it's the like filipino legend aj it's like saying the mutt's nuts it's nuts now you're calling me a nut the he, cat's tits he's even the, worse he's, he's the shits <laughs> he's the shit he's got the shits no, no he's the no, shit too much he, metformin no, no he's the shit that's a modern slang that means something good Dog. I'm not dog See, ass. AJ, dog AJ, AJ, you're down Son with the kids, man. You're down with the kids. Yeah, I'm, I'm still repping the streets. Yep, like R. Kelly. Oh, don't tell him. He's going through court Sorry. soon now. It's, oh, it's, a, very, it's okay. a very touchy subject. I was listening to uh, it's Joe. It's a very touchy subject. I was listening to Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson on a podcast talking about uh, Bill Cosby today. Uh, Bill Cosby. Is he one of your heroes? or? Um, very bad show. But like all black men, we just watched it back in just to support the fight the power. But we don't really like the show. It's very boring. I always wonder what like the sweater budget was. Because they always had like such a mate. That's a But I will say Do you one... know what? That's actually a family but guy I joke. But I will That's say terrible. one thing though. It's very surprising. Do you know who Harvey Weinstein is? Uh, I'm aware. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. I've been on his casting couch. Harvey Weinstein has been accused for over 80 rapes or whatever it was. He's yeah. got home police. What's it called? Home arrest. Home arrest. Yeah. While Bill Cosby is a certified African-American legend. And he had like 10 cases and he's rotting away in jail. You see, uh, the, you see the difference here? Uh, what do you mean? Uh? Well, yeah, but Weinstein is, he's, he's going to jail. Why is he not in jail now then? Well, because he's probably got lawyers that are dragging it out. And why is Bill Cosby in jail? <sighs> why well, is it too... Because he's a monster. And, not, and Harvey is what? Oh, he's a monster. He's, get, he's going, um, yeah, he's going to go down... Um, Why he's in home court and uh, home custody I don't, I don't and know, Bill I don't, is I don't, in jail? I don't, honestly, me and Harvey don't stay in touch anymore. After, <laughs> after that time, I went for the audition. He didn't call. He didn't send any flowers. Oh no! Nothing. Oh, can you imagine nothing. You? John, I, get, I left my number. Nothing. Jaws on the cover of magazine. Say I got raped by Harvey. <laughs> Ooh, maybe take this out Maybe slander I don't know <laughs> Oh yeah yeah Come on Harvey Weinstein Come and sue us <laughs> Yeah because that's really Going to go down well Isn't it <laughs> oh, no. Anyway what are we talking about Bodybuilding I have no or idea bodybuilding? British Grand Prix Is in four days Five days Yeah days? Pretty, Yeah but Whatever um, June the 30th Coliseum Watford London the Return of the British Grand Prix The first open uh, uh, Open British bodybuilding show Since 2016 Which I attended With Ronnie Coleman Ian That was cool turn I did Ronnie. not like That not Ian my Ronnie story. Didn't confirm It was Hardy 
Oh, yeah. He gave us that. Oh, yeah, he's got Tourette's. I, Tourette's thing. He's got Tourette's, yeah. What's that about? Was that a, was that a yes or no to Hadi or was it? Uh, I don't know. Hadi, who? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> you almost said something. No, no, I, no. I'm, you know, uh, I think you know I'm a big Hadi fan. Yeah, uh, to people at home, uh, Giles is actually very not actually everybody. Most people are. Hadi's you are a, a big fan of Hadi Chupan. Do you know why? Because you saw him live in San Marino 2017 that you talked about 48 times, <laughs> and you were so impressed by him beating Brandon oh Curry, and he was close to Cedric, and and so and so. Bloody 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 bloody. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's something else to see in the flesh. That guy. Uh, all the people who seen him live say the same thing. Derek Lunsford versus Hadi, who wins? I think that match we have to see. Mm. I think Hadi versus last year's Derek Lunsford, Hadi wins hands down. But we De- don't know what Derek's going to bring this year, Derek Lunsford. De- I think, and I still think Hadi is not a 212. Hadi is a guy who sits around 220 to 222. That's, that's his best physique. But then again, so does Derek Lunsford. I'm really happy that we have Derek Lunsford on this today. Yeah, because, he's really good, wasn't he? Because he is like Derek Lunsford. Man. He he's... had a lot of hate last... Not, yeah. You never not say the word hate. He had a lot of critics last year. Yeah. Because he got second and then... A lot of people had him in... Had him fourth. I had him... Had him fourth. <sighs> now, anyway, but, most people but, had yeah, but that, that, Yeah, but that's why, because he wasn't at his best and he didn't look his best and he still took second. So, I mean, it kind of shows you how good he is and how much the, the, the you know, they, they like him. But um, I'm but telling you... This I, I, year. Yeah. And he's got the... He's got that Kobe Bryant mindset. That, yeah, but, that go for it. Like, go for it all. There's a guy that is evolving. Every day is. He's someone, he's, every time I speak to him, I feel like I'm speaking to a smarter, more evolved version of him. Literally every time I speak to him, like I, I, can, I can compare, the person I, when I spoke to him a year he's ago. He's 25 today? He's 25, 26, yeah. The, when I spoke to him a year ago, it's like speaking to a completely different person. He's moving forward. Every day. And, yeah. and I, I, I think because he was so Captain America. Mm. He's so like goody two shoes and so perfect in everything he says and does and everything. He, it's like I think Zach Efron of bodybuilding. Zach, you could say everyone looks like Zach Efron. Yeah, well, he does look like Zach. <laughs> no, but I honestly, I think we all thought, is this for real? Is this how I is was this skeptic? Yeah, yeah. You think is this? He's so young. Is he just? Is it just? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it lip service? Lip service when they. <laughs> Is it? No, that's the wrong phrase. What, what's that girl called that with the lip service to Bill Clinton? Is oh, he Monica oh, Lewinsky? Another, another thing is, why are so many girls getting their lips done? What the? Botox? Oh, why do they get? No, the lip. I'm thinking I get. Oh. <laughs> My secrets out. Don't say it. I spoke it. No, that's in- important. No, don't say that. Don't say that. That's the secret of the stars. <laughs> that, that's that Michael Hearn diet. Yeah. So don't tell him about that. Oh, the Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes with no, don't, don't even. No, no I'm just saying no, 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 no. no hey, no, listen, no. it takes no. effort to look this good. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's I don't, I don't just fall out of bed looking this. <laughs> this is you know. Uh-huh. Chris, has Giles? You've been here in the studio since November now. Has Giles' uh, cockiness gone up through every three? <laughs> every episode is it rising every episode it was high from the start oh! and now it just goes up and up and up yeah. and up and up it's mine that's going up oh, uh, yeah. oh Chris is also starting to get a little bit yeah uh, he's getting don't give short guys too much power they go Napoleon on you <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon I could see him as Napoleon how tall was Napoleon when they say Napoleon complex three foot six no but seriously Chris you know the li- the, the... <laughs> Chris is just a little bit short. He's no, three foot eight. The legit Napoleon, the French guy. How tall was he? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know Chris, him. I've not met him. You found out. He was what? He was like. Uh, we need to get. Well, come on, get on the Google. Who's the shortest current IBB pro? Uh, Sean Clarida. What about the Italian? I know. Is he IBB pro? The Italian. Oh, Santi. Five seven. Oh, oh, he's a giant. <laughs> he's, he's a, a giant. Oh, he would have towered over you, is Chris. He, <laughs> Oh okay. oh, okay. So he's three foot six. Who's that Italian little freak um, who's been competing a long time? Not Flavio. Fl- Bascianini. He was four foot 11. Oh, current. He's oh, still. Oh, current, yeah. Flavio Bascianini. No, no. He was from the 1991 Olympia, wasn't he? Dulu Frigno. Flavio Bas- Bascianini. Do you remember stage? when he was on stage next to Jim Lou Frigno? And Lou said, come sit in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Did a Bill Cosby. 
What's that Italian guy? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. So think... back to Botox stories. Back to... Uh, no, what were we talking about? AJ, you, you said you weren't supposed to <laughs> reveal my Mike Ahern secrets. <laughs> Derek Lonsford. Derek the Lonsford. legend. Yeah. No, well, it's not legend yet. That's too uh, early to say. I think your Botox is wearing off. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> Uh, no, you were talking about lips. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, well, I was out in town on um, Saturday night, hitting the town. Oh, you, know, my you once I go out there. once every five years, you see. Okay. And uh, regular as clockwork. And um, it actually starts to freak me out with the girls. With the lips, man, it's really bad. Mm. And girls like a 22, 23 that don't even need it. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna haunt me for the rest of my life, AJ. You're scaring me, though. You're scaring uh, was, me, bro. Uh, the big lips. You don't like it. I don't fake, like it. What's it, it called? Rest... It, but it looks so obviously fake. What is I it called? Actually, rest I, the land. Rest the land. What is it called? What it's did they just put it? Shit, they put in their lips. No, no, look, but it's. Look, but it, I've never seen it. Uh, I've never seen it when it looks right. I don't that like it. Bad. Oh, horrible, horrible. And then you get girls, sort of like 21, uh, getting like really weird nose jobs, and I'm not. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> <laughs> but girls please stop it's freaking I out. think it's not too bad with the nose jobs that's it is what it is you gotta do what you want yeah if do. you've got like a like a, a you know a, a but I, I, I think what's worse is those eyebrows that's going on lately I'm not as bothered by that those eyebrows are permanently up like you see that's some I'm freaky I'm not as bothered by that I didn't like painted eyebrows I don't like it yeah not too I remember who did it again Boy, Zach, jo Zach Boy George first one who did I didn't like it Zach Khan had Boy his eyebrows jo done <laughs> years ago he did <laughs> no, Zach he did. Khan had his eyebrows painted he had them done and what I, do you mean have them done this was this was a few years ago a show in Leeds and um, careful you're going to meet him at the Phil Heath or not, I don't want to break mm, up the fight now yeah well, Zach Khan is not a small guy Zach knows Zach knows the score no, okay, so what happened? You Black were, belt in origami. You want to snitch on Sakon? What happened to his eyebrows? Yeah, it was, it was a the show in Leeds a few years ago, and I bumped into him. He was talking to Sean Tavernier. Uh, um, the talking the of, short... Uh, talking to short bodybuilders, yeah. yeah. Great and, physique, uh, by the way. Oh, he's fantastic. Rookie of the year in 2007, Olympia. How do you pronounce it? Tavernier? Sean jo Joseph Tavernier. It's a double hyphen name. Yeah, he needs to get his ass back to the Pro League and start competing. Because he's competing in where? Naba or he got, PCA? He's, or yeah, what he's is come, he came second at the Toronto in 2000. Was it 2007 or 2009? Mm. 2007, I believe it was. I think it was the first year they did the... It was 202. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was... Um, oh, that was a bit later, 2007 or 2009, yeah. But he got Rookie of the Year at the Olympia. You did. And then he ended up going, leaving, competing in another federation. Well, I mean, you have some uh, tradition of that, don't you, in your own household, don't you? Yes. Uh, well, well, well didn't leave not my accomplishment. It's, uh, oh, man. I don't want to talk about well, it. Yeah, no, let's talk about it. Uh, How can you win female rookie of the year? No, I not don't, female. I don't know. I didn't. I be pro <laughs> rookie of the year. Uh, and then just leave. <laughs> adios uh, Rosie come Ciao. on Ciao Adios Pro League And now it's not a comeback yet I can tell in her it's, 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 She's done with it Yeah of course she is She's yeah, still but... in great shape But she doesn't want to do it anymore No No Yeah she's looking good Sakon Yeah Zach, I bumped into him in the show And um, and he turned like that And you know when you like Because like when the girls get their lips done I kind of jumped <laughs> And I all like You know when you're looking at someone It's like, you know, like, like I'm looking at your beautiful hair now AJ Beautiful. I can see you calling in the air tonight. That's yeah. my hair. And um, beautiful. And uh, yes, and he'd, uh, he'd had his eyebrows. And I said, oh, and you know, when you're just staring at the eyebrows, it's like when the girls get <laughs> lips done, it's like it's, they, they, they know. Can you zoom in on his face when he did the eye thing now? Do it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when, um, you know, like when you see a girl with, you know, with a large, this area, and you, you yeah, have yeah. to try and avert your eyes when they've got it kind of all on show. And you like, only look at the biceps of girls. No more tits, bro. <laughs> I'm over it. Are you sure about that? You're very sure. Okay, biceps. Biceps, not... Not tits. <laughs> not movies. <laughs> anyway, Hashtag biceps, not So boobs. you saw... Yeah and, he, um, yeah, and he had this like weird bleach blonde hair and he had his eyebrows done. And I was... I was what do you mean done? Well, he had... Someone had done it for him. I don't know. Like paint? I just thought it was an unusual thing for a guy <laughs> back then. Like mascara or what, like a painted tattoo? Where, does, or? I don't think Zach wears mascara. I think he, unless he borrowed it off Sean Ray. What? What? That, that historical picture. I like, always want, you know, I've always visualized. This is, this is the sort of things I visualize at mm. when I'm, when I'm dreaming about Sean Ray mascara. I'm dreaming about Sean Ray with makeup. Mm. When he was at the Olympia and he's backstage and he's, I imagine like Dorian, like maybe, you know, walking like in Pumping Iron where he lost his towel, like Mike Katz lost his towel. Mm. Maybe he was looking for something and then he walks in and goes, and then just kind of reverses out because he sees Sean Ray putting mascara on. Who do we need on who's a little bit eccentric? Guys that don't wear makeup. That's who. 
Five guys, eccentric guys we want to put on the show. Oh, on the show. William World Harris the Vampire would be good. <laughs> yeah, if he could, if he could. I've Vic- like William. Victor Richards, turned priest now. That would be a good one. Oh, uh, yeah? Victor Richards, the freak from the 80s. Yeah. Wouldn't that be good to hear the story why he didn't compete? How was it to turn pro in Nigeria, story, not the, America? The story and... why he didn't do something. That's not very... No, I'd rather it's... give... I don't know. I'm not feeling the Victor Richards thing. Michael Hearn is my number one guy who I want to have on. I'm not as aware of Michael Hearn as you are, but he, I can see that he's very epic. The legend of legends. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, number four... Sp- but- Spoke to him a couple of times on DMs. Who would you? Yeah, but that didn't go too well for us. Nope. <laughs> Number four, who would you be? Who's a little bit out there? Who would you like to get on? Well, someone who I think we will get on. Can that Martin, Russian speak English? Martin Ford, who we had on our shout outs last episode. Yeah, well, I'd love to get him on the show. Does Alexander Lesikov speak English? Lesukov. Yeah. Alexei Lesukov. Um, I have sp- Actually, I spoke to him at the Arnold back in 2011 when he did the amateur. How did he do his English then? And we could converse. We can so converse. probably by now he speaks a little bit better? Uh, what's happened to him, though? Exactly. Get him there on. There was another guy that just needed to bring his legs up and get his condition. And he was... Because he was close to, like, 212. Mm. I, I saw him compete at the 2011 um, Arnold Classic in the amateur. And Thomas Barres was third or second. And he won it. And his condition... His condition wasn't very good. And he came on stage with Dreamtime, which you're not allowed to do. Mm. And he was, yeah. he was so <laughs> massive... So Russian. He was only like 24, wasn't he? He's like 31 now or something. Mm. He was so freaky. It, it, even his poor conditioning, they still gave it to him. In fact, I think that was that was the one William Bonak came third in. Mm. So William Bonak was third. Thomas Barres from Czech, uh, who preps Milan Shadek, yeah, yeah, yeah. was second. And then you had Alexei Lesukov in first. But he was so freaky, oh, man. Oh, I like you. So freaky. But I just, one of those guys that just... And I'm so happy people want to see the size. And not condition, because we had some people on our guests. We don't show if they're gonna if we can fit. We have so many guests this show, yeah. So we're not sure if we're gonna we might pe- carry one or two over to the people next. People want to see the size, Giles. <laughs> that's what. That's why they call it body yeah. building well, and not body conditioning. Do you know what just popped into my head then? Mm. The 2004 British Grand Prix when Ronnie Coleman and Marcus Rule walked out. <sighs> now you're talking about okay, so you got uh, okay. Let's let's put Marcus to the side because he wasn't in great condition in that show. No, but but then Ronnie walked out, and you mm. like mass, I like condition, AJ, and I, all of a sudden this 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 creature, this this there's something from another planet walks out slowly. The crowd is like the place is sold out. It's Wembley Conference Center. And he just turns, and then he just does his front relax, flexes his legs, and then he did that hand clasp. Oh. Muscle muscle. And, mate, the place just mate. gasped. One guy was looking, he actually went like that. Like, yeah. He, like, he was like, whoa. And everyone just went, <gasps> like all the oxygen in the room just sucked into everyone's faces. It was just like, what is that? Mm, mm, it was like, and you know that, and then when he did that readable bicep, everyone just, I think everyone just shouted, lights out, oh, baby. Man. Oh my God, it was amazing. And that's that was, why Ronnie Coleman is, oh, my heart's beating just talking about it. Every, okay, well, respect to him, but the, like Andreas Munzer. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. talk about him a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. But Ronnie Coleman is not even a person in his world who don't know who that is. Unbelievable. It's because of the size and Background. the condition, of course. Yeah. But it's the size that people remember forever. Yeah, he had. He was just a monster. He was just. He was just. I. I. I don't know whether we'll ever see the likes of that. Guy. Never. Well, never said ever. Yeah, of course, of course. We you know? thought we we're gonna see the big Ramy. Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> Ronnie Coleman said it himself. He said. Big Ramy. We're going to ask him about that maybe tomorrow. Uh, you know, when this episode will be out, yeah. uh, we have bef- at least filmed our first episodes of Eight Nothing But a Peanut Yeah, we're podcast. doing them in a, in a, in a blast. It's, uh, they're very short episodes, but um, we just want to get something out there because um, logistically we have to pull it all together. That's the Ronnie Coleman Nothing But a Podcast. So we should ask- this, is, this is also produced by Pump Media. He said he th- in two 2000- thousand. 13, 14, that Big Ram is the biggest freak of all time, he said. But it didn't work out. No. Well, it's not finished no, yet. No, I just... Do you think Rami's even going to come back? Yes. I, th- I think Rami needs a year off. Yeah, but he's going to come back, of course. Do you think so? Of course he's going to come back. You think he's retiring just because he has one year off? Oh, you know something I don't know, maybe. No, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. 
Is no. there something you know about this? No, there's no, no, I'm not saying anything. Let me, next subject. You Let's gonna, talk about the Chicago Pro. You're death threats from Alito now. <laughs> He's a good guy. You, yeah, no, but you're still going to get death threats. Yeah, no, 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 I, I, no. He says, Giles, stop talking about Big Ram. No, I'm a, I think I'm very fair when it comes to, I try to be anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Sean Roden said to me the other day. But he's got to have a big, uh, what's it called? He has a great fishing company, though. Big, <laughs> big no, Big Ramy, if he uh -huh. doesn't come back, you know? Uh, all right. What, pe <laughs> what people don't know, he has a huge fishing company in oh, Egypt. Okay, I thought he had a couple of shipping boats, fishing boats. No, it's huge. He got tons oh. of them. He's making a lot more money on that. So maybe there's even more reason for him not to compete. Does he love it? Just, Does he love it just, enough to come back? You always brag. Why can't you do some proper James Bonding and get Big Ramy on? Don't you know Neil Hill? Yeah. Come on. I'd love to get him on. I'd love to. Ramy's more than welcome anytime. And I have met him and he's a lovely guy. He's a really nice guy. He's, he's, do you know what? It's, it's not even when you speak to him, you just get how the people react around him and how he treats. He's got a nice vibe. He's got a nice vibe oh, about him. Nick, I like him. Nick like Trigilli reported that he was working with uh, Asito, but it wasn't true. No, it's rubbish. Uh they did work together, what was it, 2013 or 15, for the one of the Arnolds. They so it was just the old him. picture he posted. and uh, uh, who knows? Too much clickbait rubbish, too much uh, bad journalism at the moment. There's not enough uh, proper research done. Mm. So um, For people who don't know, Nick, Tr Nick Trujillo was a huge amateur star, I remember. Remember? He was, no, he was. He was. No, no, no. I'm just no, saying no. I don't actually know that much. I've I never really, followed I him. I remember because I'm really into I the, know the name. I know the name. I'm really into the... There's something about the New Jersey wine that I like. Okay. It's the style, the great... You know, the... the, the, the. So I really liked Nick Trujillo back in them days. He turned pro in 2015, wasn't it? So you have no idea. Mm. No, I like Nick Trujillo. I hope he... I've I, honestly, I, honestly, I don't think I've ever watched a video. I've not... I don't... I, don't, I just don't follow mm. those... I've not. I'm after watch them. After watch them. Mark Anthony, our first Mr. Olympia champion, men's physique. Yeah, he had some uh, good pointers, didn't he? In uh, for what? No, it's just how the class. He's looking for more like you. He said he's looking for not like you, but he said he was looking for more modeling type physiques. In yeah, men's, that's what he wanted. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, because that um... where you care about your hair and your appearance and like your fashion. <laughs> yeah, but that's all the things I don't like about. I know. Men's I'm just saying Ooh. that's. What he says, that's how the division should be. Okay. Okay. So right. that's not. Are we, are we going to talk about. Oops. Are we going to talk about some of the shows upcoming, like the Chicago Pro? Only guy which we know who's doing it is Sibu Sikuelo. Sibu Sisu Catello from South Africa, 27 year olds. He's had. Um, uh, he, he has a back injury. He actually he? sent me some photos this morning, a load of pictures, and he said, What do you think? And I said, Look, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of rushing out the door to film this show today, so I will come back later tonight and I will. Um, I'll properly look at them and I'll give you a proper assessment. But um, yeah, he had a perforated disc and he's been trying to train around uh, it. It's very yeah. fair play to him for carrying on with it because um, he's had. Uh, He's had uh, some issues that he's really had to train around, but you can't really see at first glance the pictures I saw. Um, I, everything looks good. Everything looks good. There well, seems to be no to have a big problem with our new guy Charles Griffin <sighs> bringing the mm, a heat. I'm allowed to say Black Hole, can't I? Yes. Okay. Sorry, AJ's giving me permission because he's I wasn't sure the, if it was appropriate. Bro, he's bringing the. Have you seen? The he's size of his arm. He's a freak of nature. Oh, the voice. And the, <laughs> he's, going, he's going all in. Yeah. BMX. D, no, DMX, that's a rapper. Oh. It's not a bike. I thought it's because he rode a BMX. <laughs> you said he's like the BMX of bodybuilding. Shane is laughing behind the. DMX, it's a rap. Rap. You know nothing about rap. You mean all that? That's the. Oh, ticka, 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 oh, ticka, ticka. Rewind, man. rewind. No, now you sound like Ali G. <laughs> <laughs> is it because I is Welsh? This is because <laughs> bodybuilding talk. Charles Griffin, mm -hmm. Sibu Sikuelo. Yeah. Who else is it? Um, I'd like to see Valier do it as well. Forget about who he wants to see it. Who yeah. is? Doing who, do, it? who do you think needs to? Who would you? Who hasn't qualified yet? Do you'd like to see in the Olympia? Valier is one of them. Valier needs to be at the Olympia, and I feel I still think he can look better than he did at Toronto. Obviously, it's my main man, uh, Sergio Oliva Jr. Yeah, it's gone very quiet on that front. Mm. I know you're disappointed, aren't you? Do you know what? A so A disappointed! AJ has been on the Sergio Oliva oh. Jr. train and the Lionel Bianchi train for like years. He's such a loyal, 
loyal, supportive fan, and it's like he's so frustrated, it's aren't he? Really it? frustrating, and I'm getting. I'm, uh, Sergio was my guy, and I promoted him, and I promoted him, and people were like, AJ, why are you talking about him? He's not that big. Then he he's went not... and won the New York Pro, and then 2017. He, you know what he did? What did he do? Sergio Olivia Jr. Packed his bag, lost his house, lost his car, died in on protein uh, tuna cans. <laughs> Went into the actual cans. Not went the tuna. into the hood of Bev uh, of Weinberger and took all the Weinberger's guys out Oof. in New York, bro. Do you think he's cursed? He did the unthinkable. He did. He did. He did. He did. He, he, did, did. he did. Close yeah. call with John yeah. DeLorso. Yeah. John yeah. DeLorso did not agree. Juan <laughs> Morel. Uh, I don't think. I'm not sure what his opinion was about it. But Juan mm. Morel is the, is is the um, pride of New York. Yeah, he's actually, oh, they I, love him, don't they? Is he bigger? He's bigger than John DeRosa. He's like crowd support in New York. Uh, it, don't people go crazy about him? People go bonkers over Morel. Yeah, crazy. Like, cause he's a legit New Yorker. Like, you don't mess around. He's got the yeah, yeah. New York. You know, Ja Rule song. I'm from New York. He doesn't even know nothing about that? rap. You You're from New York. That's Ja Rule. Not you know Ja Rule. Not, is? I have a Scooby Doo. What are you talking about? You don't know who Ja Rule is. Ja Rule. 50 Cent ended oh, his career. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, Ja Rule. Ja Rule ended 50 Cent. No, the way, come on. 50 Cent killed Ja Rule. Why? Rap career. How'd he kill him? You know, when you have, oh, forget about this, is a bodybuilding show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's talk about that uh, later. Let's, so, let's put a pin in that one. Sergio Olivia yeah. didn't do unthinkable. Yeah. So I was so. I se- remember how much I celebrated on the forums on muscle development. It was like, yeah. a, it was like Elvis came out from the retirement. <laughs> and like, it was like a big thing. And then he came on our show, episode four or five, where you almost killed yourself during it before. We- <laughs> I I don't really remember that day. But- oh, he banged his head. Uh, anyway. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, that's Rosie actually said. That's one thing we have to when we start saying something. We we don't. Yeah, think- she's told us off before because we we start stories and we go. Ooh, no, 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 no. So we Sergio was being a little bit of a. He got Sergio got robbed. Yeah, Not him personally Physically but robbed What is it called The locker Lock up Yeah it was a storage room Storage His locker. storage room Got robbed the yeah. day The so, hour of the shooting Yeah so he's very upset And those days We only had one guest <laughs> Yeah And we, I've just flown from Norway Now we're balling And this was just episode Three or four So it was very new Five So Tony Freeman was four And then he just said Guys I can't do the show right now So we just waited For hours and hours and hours And finally okay, We need some food and he called in and he said, okay, we can do it now. I was like, okay. And Jaws said, can we eat first? He said, no. <laughs> and Jaws was like, you know what I'm like with my food. And Jaws needs food every hour. <laughs> so he almost, you know, he almost crashed that day, didn't I we? I did. I was a bit upset, to say the least. No, so Sergio Olivia. But he was a great guest. He was fantastic. Aww. And then it was all, everything worked out. Everything worked out for the best I, of the end. I age. think he's been one of our, our highest rated <coughs> short clip because we make short clips. Yeah, we, yeah. And I want eighty thousand. I want to thank myself and Don. Don. Oh yeah, Don yeah, 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 yeah. Don Flex. Yeah, off the MD and forms. Win seventy seven for creating that idea. Yeah. And our biggest rated short clip Ember is hundred and eighty thousand now. Yeah, I think it's more maybe. And it's maybe two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Sergio Olivia. Yeah. Something about his ex. I don't know. What people it was. love drama, don't they? They love a bit of drama. Ah, but they the point is, he created the views. Yes. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. So I really like and love Sergio Olivia. Mm-hmm. So I f- expected 2019 to be his big breakout year. Yep. But he's not competed. No. And he has no plans to compete. No, I'm sure he'll be. Chicago is his hometown. Uh, AJ, I'm sure he'll be in touch when he lets us know when he's. Gonna and Lionel Bick, my other favorite. Nothing's going on now. No, nothing's going on there. So. Yeah. Okay, AJ, we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, do you want to talk about the tour, or, or have we talked enough about that? Oh, we talked so much about this. Um, by, when this so what, epi- about that, what about that, what Chris showed us yeah, earlier? Yeah, but when this episode is out... Yeah. It's already sold out, so it's not so much... <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Chris, what, what about the Chris... Chris, please, please, for the audience at home, put 30 seconds of the... Just 30 seconds. Is he allowed to? The, 30 the intro, seconds. Are you allowed to show please. us? Are you, the intro, to? you want the intro? Just 30 seconds. No, man. Please, and we turn off the lights. Seriously? Oh, yeah, seriously? 30 seconds. Smoke machine, Imagine lasers. Imagine we, we're in Wigan now. Yeah. Giles comes out. This is worldwide exclusive. It's not even ready yet. With my Madonna headset on, Vogue, uh, Vogue in the smoke. I'm going to wear my gold shoes from Versace that day. Okay, I have well, well, at least I'll be able to see shoes. you backstage in the dark. <laughs> I'll have my, yeah. 
You got one of your beautiful suits on, probably. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna you, borrow one of Bob Chick's sparkly suits. Got the Michael Hearn thing going turn, on by jump, then. Do you want me to turn the lights off for this? Yeah, turn the lights oh, off. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, Sean, how long have you gone, by the way? Wait, this one is second. only. Don't pay too much of it. Huh? His name's Shane. I think this should be our ending to the because we're going for forty. No, Close. we've got to do shout outs. Oh yeah, shout outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Close your eyes, people. <gasps> Everyone, if you're watching. Shut your eyes. My eyes are closed behind now, the glasses. Uh, now listen, right? This is what this is going to be at the audience with Phil Heath, 9th of July. Give me a poster uh, so we can hold it up. AJ, AJ. I've not AJ. got one. You tore it up yesterday. Yeah, you oh. did. <laughs> you <bugger. laughs> 9th of July in Wigan, 7:30, Dean Trust Auditorium, evening with audience with audience with Phil Heath, and this is what how we're going to open it. We're you only playing 30 seconds. You don't have an extra poster for me in my car, do AJ. you? Oh, good. I need to get something from AJ, this show. Visualize. Shut your eyes. Visualize. Can you hear it? Ladies Shh. and gentlemen, welcome to the Dean Trust Theatre. <laughs> the show is about to begin. Please turn off your mobile devices. We would appreciate it if you could remain in the theatre until the interval. Now, we have someone very special, just for you. <laughs> he has travelled 4,500 miles to be here. Together with Global Muscle Pro Tours, he will be visiting gyms all over the UK for the next eight days. But tonight, here in Wigan, eight, Pulse eight. Media proudly presents one of the most important and influential bodybuilders of our time. Please welcome, for this unique and important event, seven times Mr. Olympia, Mr. Phil Heath. <laughs> That's enough, that's, that's enough. enough. Stop, 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 stop. No, 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 wrap it up. And then we have smoke screen, smoke he, screen, wellness girls. And then he comes out and he makes the announcement. Get the lights back on. Yeah, so how many days was the tour, AJ? Eight. Eight days, that's a funny number, isn't it? But one thing, uh, okay, talk about one thing. Yeah. What That I, is epic production. What I've learned a little bit about becoming a huge celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, with muscle schmoes all around the world, mostly guys DM me. No girls, by the way. <laughs> girls, I don't know what's going on. He's available. AJ is no, available. No, no, don't talk about. It. I got a haters at home. Okay. This, yeah. la, 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 la. Anyway, uh, I'm just saying what we have learned, it, and you've seen it a little. I don't know how you get so many comments, Chris, because you're usually behind the mic. But the few times you step out, you you can get some comments. Can you imagine how many diss threads? He, like all the negative. You got. It does affect you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Because like he AJ? gets like he's the w and like all these YouTube comments and Instagram DMs, Giles, it can affect you. AJ, how do you fight hate? I just delete and block him. <laughs> no, how it's do you much fight easier. hate? What do you fight? What do you fight hate with? With love. Love. Exactly. And what, is, and what is right Phil? I know it's very long. <laughs> what is uh, what is Phil Heath going to be getting from the UK when he comes over? He's got gonna... lots of love. <laughs> He's going to honestly. We're going to have we're going to have Michael Bolton playing when he comes to the airport. Can we get a karaoke karaoke machine? Should we get a, a Michael Bolton impersonator when he turns up at the airport, singing to him, serenading him, and I'll be getting triggered by memories from when I was fifteen years old. <laughs> he starts jumping his legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. In all seriousness, though, we want this. Yeah, this is the seven-time Mr. Olympia who's going to be in shape. Who's going to be coming to the UK? He is coming four and a half thousand miles, mm. and he's coming for you, the British bodybuilding fan. So please, the, have come you and seen see the him. comments saying we are Phil Heath fanboys? Well, yeah. And this, I'm a body. No, 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 no. We're bodybuilding fanboys, mm. and we 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 we, just, we give respect to everyone who's part of the sport, who's positive, who's working hard, who's looking to achieve. Um, we're encouraging everyone. And well, I Mr. can't Olympia. wait when we're going to do our men's physique tour. And we got men's physique oh, posting. I've just checked the dates. AJ. It's a lot of money no. in that, bro. Because that's where all the money is, isn't it? Well, we can, we'll be developing the, the global. I'll <laughs> sit down and go through the men's physique mandatory. Yeah. No, whatever they call them. What do they call them? The hands on hip. 
<laughs> what do you call him? Why are you laughing? I'm a little teapot. Oh, I love Mark Anthony. Yeah, it's cool, dude. Cool, dude. Great guy. Vince high, Taylor, great. High tech, keep sponsoring for at least 10 yeah, more years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, um, high tech pharmaceuticals. Some, I feel like sometimes we're not giving a shout outs to also, high tech. Also, Ashley Coltwasser. That's another girl we like with high tech pharmaceuticals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why and don't you know, we get Ashley on. I, I'm hope, I hope that people are enjoying the fact that we're, um, we seem to be getting good feedback from the fact that we're bringing on more. Not just open class, 212 yeah. classics, bikinis, women's physique, female bodybuilding, figure, wheelchair. You know, we're getting on all the, you know, the t- um, film stars and all. Everyone who's involved in the industry is up and coming to legends. We want everyone involved in the sport. AJ, we need to go to some shout outs. We need to, we need to go to shout outs because need- you have a Botox appointment and I- it's coming up. So we got to go to the shout outs. Who's your first shout out, Giles? I would never dream of getting Botox this week. <laughs> Okay, right. This is a friend. You look really pretty, though. This is a friend of mine, right? I, I was reading Simon. This is Cy Fan, Simon Fan, who owns Ultimate Fitness in Birmingham. He's also holding, hosting one of the uh, Phil Heath uh, seminars. Uh, we got the date, eleventh of July, is it? Saturday. I think. I think it's Saturday, the thirteenth of July. I think that's going to be. Uh, it's, it's there. Press down oh, the middle. It'll show up. Yeah, probably. That's his niece. What there. day is it? Yeah, he oh, he doesn't have the new one up. Uh, That's no, just no, no, no. He'll, he'll have the new one up soon. Oh, look at Phil, how great he looks. Oh. <laughs> you said it like that. <laughs> <laughs> they say you're schmoin. <laughs> schmoin. Hey, dirty they schmoin. <laughs> <laughs> they see me schmoin. <laughs> okay, back to Simon Fan. Okay, you know, Simon Fan, he's a, he was... Um, I remember reading his show reports back in 1994. I started oh, is working this Simon for Simon Fan? No, well, I that started... Would be that's not Simon condition. Fan. He's just clicking randomly. Shane, Shane, control. come on now. You're getting control. a lot of money to do this job. <laughs> yeah, Simon Fan. Um, he you was actually... a picture of Simon Fan. Where is he? AJ, listen. That's Simon Fan on the right. Oh, he's That's a this, big guy. This guy, He's massive. Fantastic yeah, bodybuilder. Fantastic Which, legs. Where is he originally from? Great poser. Well, he's from Birmingham. Country, I mean. He's not white, is he? Uh, he's half Chinese. He's Chinese fan. Okay, okay, I think okay. he's Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He's um, he's a, he's very well known in Birmingham. Very well respected. This is a guy. Um, he used to write for the magazines back in 1994. He used to do the wow. fir- he used to do the show reports. And I and then a year later, I started writing for the same. He mag- writes for him when he was five years old. Is he isn't like, like 35 or something? He's a bit older than that. Oh, he keeps himself very, looking very no, good. No, he's though. very good. And he's getting married as well a week after the... Um, do you know why? Because he didn't come... St- I was really upset because he didn't come straight back to me because I thought he would instantly book Phil Heath. Is that him? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 wait. no, no. That's obviously him out of condition. Is that Ricky Singh on the left? He's a big Marvel fan. We speak about nerd stuff. I think that's the same guy. The left there. No, but Simon, AJ, you are going to love this gym. This is ultimate fit. Yeah, look. Oh, that's, that's Temple Gym. He used to run Temple Gym for Dorian. Oh, he, he, did he get Sean Rodden over here? No, or? but it was in the area. So he, he's, he's a very big... He's a bodybuilding fan, so he promotes everything. Yeah, he's a big bodybuilding promoter. He actually promoted the British Grand Prix in 2011, 2012. Mm. That 2012, that was when Sean Roden and Flex Lewis won the 212 in the Open. Yeah. And in 2011, that was the one that Branch Warren won. Oh. And Flex Lewis won the, the uh That's probably the his uh, girl's going to marry Yeah, or? this is lady. He's actually... I think he gets married... Uh, if it's a week after the... his Is it the 13th, Chris? Great, great looking couple. Yeah, so he's getting married on the twentieth of July in the place where we're staying with Phil Whoa, in the big building. The same in, day? No, twentieth of July. A week true. later. Yeah, yeah. You're not listening to me. Yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, Simon. Um, you see that Botox voice? It started to get his. <laughs> you watch. I'm gonna walk in next thing, and I'm gonna be like, and my lips are gonna look suspiciously full. <laughs> Okay, hey guys. So he's getting married 20th of July? Yeah, he's getting married. Yeah, beautiful lady yeah. there. She's, uh, she does all that kind of the social media. She's really good at the marketing. She actually, um, she, she, they, uh, she was telling about this uh, ticket hosting thing she's done for the, uh, mm. for the seminar. It's oh, there's fantastic. Jay Cutler, isn't he? Yeah, Jay was there last September and I drove down to see him actually. I drove down to say hi to, uh, to Jay. But um, yeah, so that's Randeep uh, Lote. He's yeah. uh, he's a PCA pro, fantastic. Nice he's physique, yeah? This, yeah. Oh my god, you should see that guy's condition. Probably that's not even right that's there. not even him in contest condition. That's it's him. Like he'd probably be like four. Around. He's like four. No, no, no. He's like four or five weeks out there. Okay, okay. And I've um I've been out partying with this guy as well. Was there any? Oh, don't, I can't don't snitch on him. No, I'm not snitching on anyone. He was he was uh, he was um he was a, a model of um I wasn't <laughs> model of <laughs> of um. Uh, is that him? Virtue, virtue. Is that mean, him? Yeah, in yeah, the yeah, middle yeah. there. Press that while well, it's That's Randy. Deep. That's Randy. Deep. Yeah, that's what. I no, fantastic that. physique. Fantastic Press play. Physique. You know that. What type of producer do we have today? <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. a real. I mean, yeah, there that, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Simon's awesome. 
Fantastic. Very hard trainer. I've um, I've filmed and photographed, I think, when, when he was with Dorian at uh, Temple Gym. I've traveled to the uh, the Arnold Classics with Simon. I've been to Dallas. We went to 2012, we went to the Dallas Europa. We were guests of gas. We went to, uh, that was great. I'm looking really forward, obviously, most to hang out with Phil, but I'm looking really forward to meet all these AJ. proper bodybuilding hardcore fans. AJ, you are going to love Ultimate Fitness 2 in Birmingham. It's going to be impressed. Rooftop seminar. They've got AstroTurf. They're going to have a barbecue DJ. The place when the place is going to be... He sold all the VIP tickets. This place is going to be absolutely rammed full. Cool. So uh, this is a really good... As Aaron Hudson... Aaron Hudson, the super heavyweight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was on it. I think you speak to him on... You've spoke to him on, I've seen you interact on Instagram yeah. with him. Just want to make sure you know who he is. Well, um, go up to people and follow him. Let's use Instagram handle. Yeah, Simon, Sci fan, check him out and uh, get your event bright. That's the last experience with... Uh, an experience with Phil Heath at Ultimate Fitness Birmingham. This is um, this is the ticket hosting... Um, Press it. Let's remember the date comes up. Well, we already said the date. So, yeah. No, we know the date. See what happens when we come this up is, here? This is how you get the tickets, really, and it alerts you. And Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Ah. 13th of July. Look at that. Birmingham. Fi Five wow. to 54 pounds, the tickets. How much? They are, look. We are very excited to announce that none other than seven-time Mr. Olympia, blah, 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 blah. From five pounds, or what do you mean? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I have to check it later. But um, yeah, they've sold all the VIP tickets. He said, that, I think that was in three or four days. They sold out and he was mm. messaging me straight away. So um, cool. Yeah. But that honestly, that's the one I think you, it, it's, um, that's, that's going to be a really good one. Good I, yeah. One. Yeah. A couple of the places I'm very excited you about. Almost this. The... Uh, no, that's the Chris start. There. That's the start. Of the <laughs> that is going to be what well, you've heard. AJ, you've heard the intro. That is going to be amazing. Chris. Uh, we, we do a tag team. I'll be on your team. And you, Giles, you'll pick our other producer. And we see who wins. Chris, are you ready to fight? AJ, over to your shout out. My shout out is... Nando Shutson. <laughs> I got my Botox appointment at 10. Okay. So this is my guy. Christer wow. Hoftwet. Go down. Uh... Press in the middle. Okay. So what, do you, what, is, what are you impressed? I'm impressed with the condition. Very. Six, six tall. Six six. He's six six. He just competed at the oh Amateur Olympia. God. He got second place. Where's he from? He's from Norway. Oh, what a surprise! So he's the. <laughs> so he's one of the. Are, you, are you all giants there? These these that this guy, he's been going on for ten years straight. Wow. He's only thirty four. Okay. So go he started down. when he's twenty four. Yeah. Go down to the left there. Even look at that back. Get yeah, back. but he, but he's a. Pro Come on, ah. Huh? He reminds ah. me, do you know who he reminds me of? The German Matthias Bothoff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah, yeah, for yeah. the back shot. So what division do you think he competes in? Well, I, I can see classic, but... Yeah, you can see. So that's, that's a classic he, bodybuilder. He looks like a super heavyweight, mate. The point is he, he needs to grow even more if he's going to be a BB Pro bodybuilder. Well, I, do, I don't want to see him cutting down to classic when he could clearly be a good super heavyweight. Look at that back. So look, look at the back. Look at the back. Look at this. Look at this back. And imagine uh, on pictures, if you're 6'6", six, six, you always look uh, um, slightly less impressed than you are in real life. In real life, you're even more impressed. Why is this guy not signing up to like film agencies? Because Norway's is holding him down. You know what happened? Well, why doesn't he like do like? Do you I know? Mean, okay, okay. Just so you can people say, press yeah. X. Go up slowly, 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 slowly. <laughs> a little bit faster than that. Come on. <laughs> Slow okay, go down, go down. Slowly, I'm gonna show you something. So you see, I'm not trolling. Like a girl on a first date. Go down. <laughs> see, just um, go down. <laughs> he's been shy now. A little bit faster. I, I know where it is because this is very important. So people at home understand yeah. what's going on in Norway. Yeah. Go down, go down, go down. How is he not arrested every day in Norway? Go down. Big. Oh, look at that picture. But go down. Yeah. Wow. Uh, good front wall bicep. Go down, go down, go down. A little bit faster. If I don't see it, I'll just talk about it. Okay. What are we, uh, looking, what are we looking for, AJ? The Tell announcement us. where he got kicked out of the gym for being too good. Uh, too good. What do you mean too good? Was he dropping his okay, weights? Okay, so it's not there. Okay, anyway. Oh, Flex Magazine photo shots. Okay, mm. so he's one of the guys gotten kicked out of his gym. They said, we don't want you at our gym. AJ, I've been hearing this story more and more from Norway. I'm not impressed. So he got kicked out from his gym for being too freaky. <laughs> really? So they told was, he not doing anything was he doing anything daft in the gym or throwing no, no, his no. weights? Or? So this is a guy who's a real serious dedicated he's not second place amateur classic. Hmm. At the he's not just tall, but he's wide. So this is the guy to look out for. Definitely. People follow me at show his yeah. Instagram handle. Very impressive. So you feel like tall, freaky guys. What's he weighing on stage? He must be like 260, 270. Yeah. Yeah, at least. So, I, I, I wonder what he weighs in the off season. Christer Hofwett. 
Chris underscore H O F. Krista Hoftwit. And you see, he has an organic following. He's not buying followers. Yeah. Show this guy some not support. Not like you. <laughs> and then go to Giles' next uh, shout out. Suspicious. Uh, oh, yeah, Walker Brook. Yeah, yeah. This is this this uh, this is a women's physique pro. She just took fifth, I think it was in Omaha. Uh, can we click on her thing? Where is she from, England? She, or? No, she's from America. Okay. I don't actually know a huge amount about her, but look at that physique. Oh. Look at that. No, 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 no. Look at that. No, no, no. On the right, on the right. The, the, the group, they are. They are. Look at that. Just what, keep it there. Isn't that the perfect X frame? That to me, she took fifth place. Female bodybuilding, of course, or female physique. She took fifth he- fifth place at the Omaha Pro. And female I, physique, w- women's physique pro, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, like by Giles Tiger. Look, and for me, her look really jumped out at me because she's wow. got she's got what I see as the perfect women's physique, but she's obviously not winning because the girls placed ahead of her were very very good, but they didn't uh, they had better condition. Okay, so. She is literally, I mean, she's got a very striking look, like, like Malakan or DLB. I want to see more. I mean, I, I just, yeah, a she's incredible. Thing. Go up, go up. I, 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 di- I messaged up, her. AJ, press the one where AJ, we can see her on stage. I messaged her on, um, on Instagram and I said, I said, you've got perfect women's physique look. You're top five Olympian material. I am so impressed by this girl and I was baffled by her placing. But she's one of these ones that is knocking on the door of pro show wins. Yeah, I'm listening. I just pro show wins. I mean, look at there we can tell. look. Come on. Yeah, so the condition is not. I, I could see her in ten percent better condition. I could yeah. see that top three Olympia. I really could. So, so her condition is not prime time. She's eighty five percent there with the conditioning. Okay. So obviously she needs to push the condition a little bit better. What a great look, though. What a beautiful women's physique look that is. Wow. I am so impressed with Walker. Let's and she was so and she was so blown away when I made these comments. You know. Look at that. That is a lovely yeah. woman's physique. She's not lacking anything. No. Just that tiny bit more condition, not too much more. Now, look. Perf- what have I said there, AJ? Look. See? Perfect example of true women's physique. Sergio. And said. Sergio. There you go. They still seem to be something I can't see. Yeah, what Sergio saying. is liking it, of course. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, obviously, this is, you know, how often would you get <laughs> people like myself or Sergio or. <laughs> no, no, no. It sounds weird. No, but making comments on someone that is isn't like a multiple pro show winner, but yeah, do it, she's do it catching every... the eye of everyone because I'm telling you, that is the look. That's that I could see that winning the Olympia. 100%. I think she's that good. Uh, not Beat Natalia Coelho? Top five. Well, I, I prefer her physique to Coelho. No, I do. I do. I think Coelho's fantastic, but I actually prefer her physique. Ah. But she's not there with the conditioning yet because the legs, there's... Um, there's... Tyler Coelho's very good. She is very good, yeah, but yeah. But so is she. But I could see her top five, maybe even top three in the Olympia in the next year. Mm. I think she's really fantastic. My last shout out is another guy from Norway, of course. Yep. Yeah. Mm. This go down. So <laughs> Norway. From Norway. He moved... He, Born in Sweden. He's Swedish. Go go the middle, but Tommy. <laughs> Press Tommy. that. Just keep it there. Uh, old Tommy. So this guy trains at Tommy Turvison's gym. Sweet. He is from Sweden, mm. moved to Norway, and studies in Manchester. Okay. So he's a big fan of bodybuilding. Okay. And he competes in uh, classic physique oh, also. Is everyone competing classic That's in Norway? That's the new thing. Classic and women's physique. Yeah. So he's a student of Tommy Turvison. Right. Really. Tommy, is Tommy's... In my head, because I've been to Norway, I've been to Oslo. Is mm. the is Tom, Tommy's supplement shop not far from Harold's gym? Yeah. So he works. Yeah, I've been, I've been he's there. also he works at Tommy Nutrition. Okay. So he's one of the most popular bodybuilding profiles in entire Norway. I thought you said he lived in Manchester. He studies in Manchester. Well, how does School. He... he goes back and forth. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, so, I suppose you do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like I do. Yeah, and yeah. He trains yeah. in Norway. He could be travel buddies. Twenty four fitness. Okay. And he trains at five in the morning every day. Oh wow. So he can get it out of his way. Yeah. And then do the rest. Yeah. Let's go some more pictures of him. Okay. So this guy, let's go so he's uh go to the right there maybe or Incredible. so we can see his physique. Yeah. There is he, is he a tall there. guy as well? He's tall. Everyone's tall in Norway. He's tall. He's uh, probably 6'1". Okay. That's my height. Uh, that was uh, that's not, not much. but So he's a very marketable look also. It's, Great back. Everyone's got a big back in Norway. Trains hard. He trains really hard. Do you do a lot of deadlifts in barbell rows? He do a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Go up so you can see his profile. Yeah. Up all the way up so you can see his name. Yeah. yeah. This is Adam, Adam Lundell. Lundell. 
definitely a guy for look out to. He's going to get more serious year 2020. Yeah. He's going back to being super serious. So watch out for him already now. Mm. Follow his Instagram, people. Fantastic. Okay. Um, AJ, is there anything else you want to talk about? That's 20. Else? Let's end it. We went too far. It's a wrap. <laughs> too far. Okay, then. Hopefully, next episode, we'll have some exclusive content from Bro. Are you coming, uh, Chris? Are you coming to the UK, Bros to Bros, or no? Yeah, you're yeah, always invited. invited. You're, invi you're a VIP now. VIP. You're like me, a kind no, of a big deal now. It's say yes or no. It's, it's, it'd be, are you going to make it or no? Yeah. So that means we're going to have some exclu exclusive footage. <clears throat> this is episode 26. Yeah. Episode 27, you have exclusive... Will we have it, Chris? Exclusive footage from the British Grand Prix. Yeah. Who's, yeah. You, who's you winning? Who's, who's you got winning? The pride <laughs> of the UK. Nate. The pride of Jamaica also. Nathan Dowder. Nate Samson Diouda the Asher. have Samson Diouda to beat Nathan. No, no. Controller. We have Nathan the Asher winning, and I have Samson Diouda in my top three. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, Nathan's. Uh, yeah, he has to kind of win this one, doesn't he? He has to. You got to go to Olympia. We've got to get him to the top six, Olympia. Before we go, who's leading the Olympia point system? Uh, I know Luke Sando is on sixteen points. Cedric McMillan. Cedric. Oh, because he got third at the Arnold and second at the Arnold Australia. And the third one is, how is it with the big um, James Hollings head? I don't, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. No. I don't know his points. But he's had a third and eight. He got third at um, the big man show in Spain. He got eighth at New York Pro and then he got sixth in Toronto. And Milan Sadek uh, is up there too. Yeah, He's I tell you what though, I tell be a big show for him. I tell you what, Milan. I think Milan will be. Can he win the Grand Prix? Does he have potential to win? If Nathan came in horrendously off, yes. But I don't think Nathan's going to come in horrendously off. Oh, but I Nathan think Nathan is coming in Milan sliced and diced. Milan Shadek will one hundred percent be first call out, and I can see the first call out being Samson, Milan Shadek, and Nathan Diasha. But what if Hadi turns? You have out? no faith in Ole Christian Vogue yeah, and Andrea Presti, and they'll they'll round out the top five. What happens if Hadi Chupan before we go? If Hadi Chupan comes and he's in shape, what happens? There's going to be a big upset. What happens? There's going to be a lot of Scouse fans, very upset. Mm. I think he'll beat Nathan. No, I think he will. No, I think he will. No, <laughs> no, never. Okay, well, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see if he turns up. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, big thank you to High Tech Pharmaceuticals. Big thank you to our lovely... I enjoyed this intro. Tech I feel it was very good. Feel good. Our tech geniuses, Chris and Shane. Nerd 1, Nerd 2. Revenge of the nerds. Hey, I'm a nerd. Revenge of all the nerds. Then. Oh, yeah. I'm what surrounded you... by geeks. <laughs> okay, we out. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, well, hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, we'll be right back after the break with our first guest on episode 26 of Global Muscle Radio. <laughs> And we are out. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio here at the Pump Mini Studios. Joined by AJ, my co-host, all the way from Norway. And we're joined by the 212... Derek Lunsford. Oh, oh, sorry. Can you turn the microphone down a bit, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, sorry, that really. Oh, what's oh, up, sorry. guys? Sorry, the microphone. It's an honor to be back. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, Derek. Um, First of all, Derek, that guest posting you did last week. Yeah. Oh. AJ's been yeah, very excited. I've plenty of butter to cut cut off yet, still, but no, fantastic. <laughs> Where was it again for the people who doesn't Thank know? Thank you. Yeah. What well, I actually did two guest posings um, uh, two weeks apart. One was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and one was in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, yeah. How much did you weigh those at those guest posings? Um, on stage, I was probably close to two forty, but uh, in the mornings, I'm probably like, you know, two thirty five or so. Yeah, mm. that's interesting. Two forty. Yeah. The thing is, you you conditioned good at that weight as well. It's not yeah. that bad. I mean, the glutes are they, the glutes are ready. It's like you know, there's not there's. I just. I think. I, I appreciate that. I think that I'm in a good spot, but I'm not stage ready by Olympia terms. You know what oh. I mean? Yeah. Like I definitely have a good fifteen pounds to lose, uh, and then you know probably just dry out from there. So I think it's it's going to be close. 
But as far as those Olympia competitors, us mm. Olympia guys, you know how gnarly, grainy, and shredded you have to get. So yeah. do I think I could do well at a show uh, if I lost another 5 or 10 pounds? Yeah, but... I think to really be at my best, I need to lose another 15. What What do you think you would look your best at in terms of, like, we, I spoke to Flex and he said, Giles, he says, I've always been, for the last eight years, I've been, re- well, six, seven years, I've been, I can be ready at 225. What do you think you could be ready at if you, if you didn't have the 212 restriction? If I were to start right now today and prep for the Olympia, let's just say whatever weight, yeah. I think. I think I could be a solid 225 to 230. Yeah. But now let's say, like, I don't think that that's even my best, to be honest with you. I think that if I were to give myself a couple years and grow into like a 235, 240, mm-hmm. I think I would be best closer to 240, truthfully. Do you think the midsection would still be good at 235? Yeah. Really? Okay. That, I mean, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, I suppose you're 240 now, and you you know you obviously got a bit of body fat to lose, but your midsection looks good. It looks tight. We yeah. saw the guest posing, and your midsection yeah, does look tight. Go, as long as I'm conscious of it, I think you know. I think um, you know, shoveling in a lot of food uh, yeah. will definitely you know uh, expand it more. But I think it's it, it is an illusion. Also, mm. I'm not saying that I don't have a bigger waist than I had when I was a welterweight. Because I'm sure that I do. But the illusion makes it look like I have a smaller waist than whenever yeah. I was a welterweight. Yeah. So it's all about, you know, how it fits on my frame. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So how, how do you think your physique has improved from last year? Oh, man. And, and, and this is not me trying to boast or anything. I, I just, I finally, for the first time, like a week ago, mm-hmm. um, at like 14 weeks out, I realized how much more balanced my upper body and lower body is. Yeah. So I know that I was really lacking some, um, legs in the past, uh, particularly <clears throat> hamstrings. And I just noticed in my back shot, I was like, Oh my God, like it actually like my back and my legs like are proportional now, like very, that's very good. Uh, symmetrical. That's good. So I think it's just more about, um, you know, at, like like Arnold always said, add a little clay here, add a little clay there, <laughs> yeah. and chisel it away. Yeah. And and that's just kind of been our focus since last year's Olympia. Instead of taking like a crazy rebound and like, you know, putting on 30, 40, 50 pounds right away, mm. I actually didn't get up to where I'm at now, which is like 235. Mm-hmm for probably nearly three months. Mm. It took me till like the end of December to uh, work my way up to 235 or so. Mm. Mm. So I just I just kept training like I normally had trained and just slowly let my body just keep getting better and training the body parts I needed to, to mm. be very symmetrical for this year. Yeah, because last year, I think there was, um, I think it was, the thing is, in the run-up pictures, I didn't see there being a huge discrepancy between your upper and lower body. But sometimes when you sort of, you know, you have to cut weight, sometimes it goes from the, some certain places on your physique. And it definitely, right. it definitely came across um, the upper chest, uh, you know, around the shoulders, where everything wasn't quite popping like it was in the run-up pictures. And then you just lost right. a little bit of fullness off your legs. But everything, like you, but everything sure. was very conditioned. So I'd be very excited. Like I noticed in the, um, in your because your riddle bicep is, I mean, it's, it really does, like, it, it is it is as good as Flex Lewis's in many ways, but then in the lower half there was a bit of a, um, a bit of a lacking in the calves. And I noticed the the, pro- right. the progress pictures about two weeks ago. I noticed straight away your calves and hamstrings have definitely improved. Exactly, and and even like you mentioned, like my arms and upper chest, like. I wasn't even going to mention it, but actually that has improved as well. Good. Uh, I've noticed on myself. So it's just like fine tuning things at this point. Cause if you think about it, you know, I, I maybe have seven pounds I could have gained from last year. So yeah. Yeah. let's say, I mean, if I put seven pounds in my lats, yeah. that's going to make me look like, you know, overall worse. Right. So yeah. if I put maybe, you know, a pound or two here, and a, pound, and a couple pounds in my legs, and just kind of make myself a little bit more balanced. Yeah. Now, in my back shot, two years ago, I was like, "Damn, look at my lats! They're they're crazy." Yeah. And now I look at my back shot, and I go, "Everything's proportional," which is what we're striving for. You see what I'm saying? Thank you. Like yeah. it's not like, "Whoa, he has a huge back." It's like, "Whoa." It's well put together now. Uh, so one reason I'm I'm really excited to see you on stage this year is because um, you weighed in. What was what did you weigh in at the last year's Olympia, or the weigh in on the Thursday? What yeah, did you so the last two Olympias I weighed in right at two eleven, like so, basically two twelve. Right. So, my, but 
the thing is, is I my body weight dropped all the way down to 207. This is what I was about to say, Derek, because you said yeah. normally what guys that are sort of really having to, who are kind of ready at 220, then they're sucking it down to 212 to weigh in. The best case scenario is that they come back up, you know, with even with the water yeah. drop and manipulation. So if you can be on stage at 215 to 217, really by the time you're on stage, but you said your weight dropped, it went down four yeah, pounds. Th- there were some reasons for that, like why yeah. that happened. And we... We're definitely going to address them this year, um, but basically, I I, I I do not believe. And and me and my coach talk about this. James and I we talk about this. We had a phone call last night, but yeah. um, last year I just felt like he wasn't quite feeding me enough right away after weigh-ins. Mm. And um, you know maybe he could. He, he kind of says no. Usually your body reacts better to not much food. Like I don't need. I could eat 200 grams of carbs year round, and and that's that's all I need. You know yeah. what I mean? Even in my off season, I don't need to go any he- any heavier than that. So it's like 200 grams of carbs for me will blow me up. Yeah. But let's say I was consuming, you know, five or 600 grams. It just my body wasn't reacting like it normally okay. uh, should or would. And so he he assumed my body was just gonna you know take notice of the food and it just come back alive. Yeah. But every couple hours, my body, my weight would drop a pound or two. Weight would drop a pound or two. Every meal, my weight was dropping. Well, you just, and he was just like, okay, we'll have this meal. He would add a little bit extra, but not mm. like, I wasn't happy. I, I thought about this, you know, yeah. after the USA's, after I weighed in and was loading, I went out to uh, one of the diners on Vegas. This is when I turned pro, right? Yeah, yeah. Back in 2017, Mm -hmm. I went out to one of the diners and ate like a heavy, heavy meal. Mm. But now that we're like, you know, doing the pro shows in Olympia, we're making sure that we are cooking and and making our own food or I have my meal prep service, Icon Meals, Yeah. um, that I trust like just these foods. There's no variables at a restaurant. Um, But it just seemed to be like I wasn't eating enough dense food, Mm. you know, and my body was just kind of like, dude, you've put me through the ringer um and we just need a rest man so so actually for finals i end up having like two in and out burger sorry two hearty stick burgers and fries (laughs) and i pulled back out but here's the thing um even for last year it's always better to load ahead of time and then i would say like have to taper off the food yeah yeah. where we were almost playing catch-up now this year with it being a Friday morning and a Friday night Oh, show. it's all in one day now, isn't only it? Only one day. All in yeah. one day. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now, and and with it being in the morning, I, I think I can load all of Thursday. Yeah. Because Thursday morning is the weigh-ins, and I can load and do everything I need to on Thursday, yeah. wake up dry as a bone on Friday morning, so, and then be right on the money, hold it till Friday night, and I'll be solid. So... Correct me if I'm wrong. At the last year's Olympia, you were probably on stage at about, what, 208? Probably. So I, I, I've got, I'd like to, I'm, I'm guessing you could maybe be full as a house, dry at around 215, 216. Do you think that's realistic for this year's Olympia? I don't see myself being under 214 or 215 yeah, by any that, means. Like, yeah. like yeah. I cannot imagine, like if that happens, if that were to happen again, yeah. then we have made some wrong decisions, yeah. but I, I don't see that. I think that that could have been me last year, mm. but I don't know if, if this makes sense to you or not. Like, I have a lot more dense muscle this year, a lot more muscle maturity from one year of training. And actually, I have to admit, training with Ben and, and making sure that I'm connecting with the muscle and squeezing hard and, and more time under tension – has really brought more density to uh, all my body parts. But do you think you can so, still flatten out though? Because last year you looked about seven, eight pounds too flat upon based upon what I saw in the lead up. Because I thought, so oh that's my what God. I was saying. I think, he looks I like think, an open guy here. You know, he looks full. Yeah, I think I think that's what I was getting. At. I was like, if it doesn't make sense to have like immature muscle that kind of expands and then kind of comes down, expands, comes down. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Can like I? Yeah. If you're if you're kind of if, if you're dense and hard, and, I mean, yeah, you can still be flat, but I mean. You could tell that guy's like dense and yeah. hard. Whereas if you have like like less mature muscle, like a little bit newer muscle, I feel like when you flatten out, you kind of just yeah. You, does that make sense? Yeah, guys? but but I, I honestly I think like you just look like 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 I said, based upon what I saw, I would love to see you at around two fifteen because I think that that that's going to be tough to beat, especially when now you've bought up your calves, your hamstrings, and there is yeah. more. There's no discrepancy in your physique at all now, and the waist is still small. 
um, yeah, I, I think I think 250, I think it'd be very tough to beat. Over to you. As a 212 competitor, were you happy about the announcement that you were ending Friday night uh, on, on the, in 212? Is, are you happy about this? Right. Um, As a 212. Okay, so, so let me just put it out there. I, I've already kind of commented on this uh, on another interview. Okay. Um, and some people took it like the wrong way as if I was like either upset with the situation or whether I was for it. Yeah. I'm actually ni- neither for it or against it yet. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. I, I'm an optimistic person. I see opportunity and hmm. good and bad situations, always. Mm-hmm. I can always find a way to make good out of a situation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I see a lot of potential for this to be a positive thing for uh, the division. I actually see it being a very positive thing for the Mr. Olympia as a whole and the promoters. Why? So why? I can understand. Um, just the way, because actually when you have the 212 and the open together, those are like the real hardcore bodybuilding fans, yeah. right? So if you were to break it up a little bit, you would have the bodybuilding fans coming to the expo. They would have, they'd be at the, the Friday night finals. And then it, it, it's more, uh, exciting for people that are following the industry and they want to be involved more throughout the weekend than just one final night so i i get it on the promoters end where they would want to um bring more ticket sales throughout the whole weekend friday Mm -hmm. morning at the expo so i get that and 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 with um you know speaking to dan solomon and 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 some of those guys um the 212 champ is expected to give a speech on that saturday night so that's extra exposure that's extra exposure for the 212 champ right And and to and to top it all off, as far as all the optimistic, positive uh, attitude about the changes, mm-hmm. is that like I said, it's a Friday morning, Friday night show. So I, now all we have to do is keep it together for one day, and I think that that structure is a lot easier than you know a Friday night, Saturday night. Now, mm. that's all the positivity. <laughs> now, <laughs> now maybe some of the some of the um, um, things I'm unsure of is like the prestige of being at the arena, right? Um, are we gonna be looked at as just kind of, okay, they put us on the expo stage and uh, is it gonna be looked down upon? And now a lot of them assured me that no, that's not the case. That's just how it's laid out. And you know, they, they believe it's best for everyone in that situation, including me yeah. and all the other 212 guys being at the expo. So. They assure me that it's not something to be upset about. Okay. But I know that you know a lot of other guys who uh, have competed in the past. I would call them legends in the 212 uh, are not as happy about okay. that. They feel like it, it is going backwards. Um, whereas uh, the Mr. Olympia, the IPB Pro League says no, we're actually moving forward in the 212. Now, I kind of gave a little bit of mm. like the I'm unsure side of it, and I'm giving a lot of the positive side. The reason why I say I'm on neither side yet is because I really don't know until after the weekend mm. whether it's going to benefit the 212 guys or it's going to be a bad thing for the 212 guys. I don't want to be for it or against something that's going to hurt not just me, but everyone in that division. What's your I opinion on it, well. John? Uh, I'm afraid it's going to be a lot of bikini and men's physique. On Sunday, it's going to be a tremendous amount of men's physique and bikini. And figure, fitness. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, as, a, as a... You know, on the Saturday, you mean? The Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a li- but what, <sighs> one, one thing, one question, one thing that's popping up in my head is because uh, uh, normally at the Olympia, only the top five guys get to pose. So I'm guessing if it's at the expo, you're going to get more than f- the top five getting to pose. Do you know about that? I am not positive. But okay, so I would assume finals, that more than five are allowed to pose if it's held at the expo. That's what I'm saying. So l- let's be clear here. The, the Friday pre-judging in the morning yeah. is at the expo. Yeah. The Friday night finals is at the arena. Oh, right. Mm. Okay. So you can buy right now. Uh, this is kind of a plug for the Mr. Olympia pre ticket sales, but just because I've been getting a lot of questions about this, I even put it on my Instagram on how to do it. Yeah. Mm. Go to mrolympia.com for mm-hmm. the tickets, right? Pre order tickets, mrolympia.com. Right on the front page, it says buy tickets. Click there. There will be a list of like expo ticket, finals tickets, etc. Mm. You buy the expo ticket for Friday. 
for the prejudging. And then you go back to the where it says buy finals tickets. Yeah. Then it gives you an option on Friday night or Saturday night. And if you want to see the 212, then then you'll pick the Friday night, excuse me, finals. Okay. So I want that to be very clear. And and so the way that uh, they presented it to me was like, okay, you're going to be at the expo. You're going to be at the arena on Friday. And then you're gonna, whoever the champion is will be giving a speech on Saturday. That's three, to- three different places, three different times for exposure. Yeah. I thought, okay, that sounds nice, right? Um, so there could be a lot of great things that come from it. You know, you never know. So what are the downsides then? Because I, I thought, I just assumed when you were saying that before, I thought the, um, the whole show was going to be the expo. And I was thinking, oh, that's not great. No. But you're actually going to be yeah. at the main stage on the Friday. So I don't understand what the downsides are. I, I, um, I, I think it's because just like anything, like if, if you were to take steps in a more prestigious direction, whether it be yeah. more prize money or whether it be... Uh, you know, the the stage itself or the way – like the presentation and everything. Once once you keep moving forward because uh, it started on the expo and then if it goes to the arena and then back to the expo, it's kind of like is it moving forward still or is it moving back? And whereas the promoter and, and the Olympia committee, they say, no, like we're still moving forward in the division. It's still a growing division and people love it. Mm-hmm. And I hear all the time how it's the most exciting division mm-hmm. – and uh, but then I, I have to think of different perspectives here, right? I have to think of a promoter's perspective, and uh, you know, as the Mr. Olympia Committee, it's like if this is such an exciting division that everybody says that it is, then why would you want to put it with the other most exciting division? Because the two twelve is this. Hang something... on, I'm, I'm missing something. No, the point so, is so. You're trying – as a promoter, you're trying to sell tickets. You're trying to make yeah. money, right? It's business. As much as they love bodybuilding, it is business, and that's okay. Yeah. That's a great thing. Um, so why would you put the two top-selling tickets together at one time? You could put it over here. You could put it over here, and then – you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so All the they're, they're selling fans, double the tickets. So then the bodybuilding fans will get to come see us at the, at the expo. So you're selling an expo ticket. Yeah. Then Friday night – you sell a Friday night ticket to the finals, and then, mm. oh, you want to see the Open? Okay, Open will be on Friday night, or sorry, Saturday night, yeah. Yeah. finals. It, AJ, so, what, what do you think? What do you never... think? I think it's very important now in these times, for me, as we've studied the, the sport very, sorry. very closely, the 212 is going to a transition, taken out of the Arnold Classic. Yeah. Right. Uh, some of the greatest legends retired. Yeah, it's very good to see Derek asking questions. He's not negative. He's not positive. He'll yeah, see yeah. what. But let's have open. Our mind has to be because yeah. I'm not liking the way 212 is going, with out of Arnold Classic. Uh, yeah, but it could come back. It could come. Yes, back. But I, we- I have to admit this. I, I have brought this up several times to several people, mm-hmm. and this may bring a comeback to uh, some of the shows. Mm. I said, why the heck are we not having a post Olympia tour? I mean, seriously, why? No, no, yeah. like this one, uh, I ramble a lot, guys, but I really want to get this one out here. Yeah. Because to me, it just makes total sense, right? Okay. So, the every division should be com- competing post Olympia at different different uh, shows around the world. It should be a world tour of post Olympia tour, yeah. where you have like the two twelve women's bikini and women's physique, or sorry, men's physique. Um, together at a show and then the same weekend or like the next weekend uh, you'll have other divisions at another place around right, the world okay. and it's almost like you're touring and doing like these expos you can even have like a like a, almost like an expo with every show also yeah and the, but here's the thing why why would you have that well there's plenty of shows but you know uh during the season why don't you just keep eating those well why would we right first mm-hmm. of all first and foremost why would we because if we show up out of shape it doesn't look good for the Olympia, and the Olympia committee does not like that. Yep. And the fans yep. are like, "Ah, oh, man, is this the way the guy's going to show up?" Right? Mm. So it doesn't it doesn't sell any more tickets to the Olympia. Um, the money, as far as like prize money and things like that, I know that's. I'm not saying that's my reason. I'm just saying that's a lot of guys' reasons for not competing. Yeah, because that the prize money is not worth that. You can make more in a guest pose or in a yeah. you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, and not have to be in shape. Um, and then. What about just the prep itself? It's such a toll on your body health. And, you know, you, 
you give up six months to get ready for one show. And if you do that every six months, you're giving up your full year for mm. not really any reason. And okay. Mm. So you're having these shows and you're saying that the numbers are down in certain shows. I'm not saying 212, but just in general, um, some shows are up, some shows are down, but, uh, but you wonder why the top Olympia guys don't compete, but I just gave it to you. Because if you show up out of shape, it's not good for the next year's Olympia. Mm. Uh, it's the money and the effort itself. So if you're already in shape, you just did the Olympia, and everyone's excited, and two weeks later, you know, we're all, all the top five guys are coming to your country to compete. You best believe everybody's going to show up because we're doing Olympia round two, basically. Yeah. Mm. And then if we have another show two weeks after that, Olympia round three for all the guys who want to compete. And what makes it even more exciting is that the guys who didn't get to compete at the Olympia but mm. plan on it for the next year, yeah, they could jump in and, and make their mark and say, I stood next to this guy and I'm coming yeah. back. And so it already excites I, it for the next year. I, now, here, like I said, like I know I'm rambling. I know you guys want to talk. No, no. But, <laughs> yeah. um, Here's another thing. I have to really turn my mind inside out and go, why do things change? What's the real reason that there's no AMI contracts or Flex Magazine contracts anymore? Because first and foremost, you go, ah, that's done. That'll never happen again. And that would make sense if that's your mentality. But why did they have it in the first place? Okay, back in the day in the 90s, there was exclusivity in mm -hmm. your athletes, right? Yep. So if, if, if I was to be sponsored by MD, then I couldn't talk to anyone else. And I was your athlete, but you were paying me good. And, you know, we did some work together. Cool. I showed up at some events, whatever. That, that would have been our thing. Now, <sighs> supplement companies, clothing companies, um, you know, the magazines and, and everything, it's, it's all going to digital. It's all going, you have to be on more than one platform uh, on social media, on the bodybuilding media, on as much media as you can. You want to be as on, on as many platforms as possible. You don't, you can't hold yourself back anymore. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, like this is the first year that Animal has allowed any athletes to have a clothing sponsorship. Oh, oh really? Okay. Be, and I explain it to them. I said, would you rather me be on another global platform yeah. And yeah. and doing things with another top company uh, or would you rather take me away from another contract where I could get paid more and be doing more and be more involved and just so you can make me exclusive. And they're like, oh, OK, we get that. That makes sense. So now let's go back to like the AMI contracts. Like Olympia. Now, now this is a stretch here, maybe a little bit, but there could still be empty contracts. There still could be all these contracts now. How would that work? It would have to be communication between the Mr. Olympia, the IFPB Pro League, and the company itself. There's not enough Olympia guys or pro bodybuilders doing enough media mm. and especially showing up to the local NPC <laughs> show. Yeah. Tell me that there's not plenty of uh, pros just in the United States alone. There's not, a, there's not plenty <laughs> you're right, you're right. enough pro bodybuilders that could not show up to every single show you know there should be at least two or three pros at every Derek, NBC show Derek, Derek, this, this is exactly what we were talking about was it last night or today we talk about it all the time yeah, we talk okay, about so, <laughs> so I figured out like how it could work yeah. but there has to be communication and understanding between yeah. the IVB Pro League and NPC the Mr. Olympia committee and then the promoter and whoever's doing business in the situation so, and the athletes, everyone has to be on the same page here. So if you had more pro bodybuilders at these shows and involved around the world every weekend, then that would be more exciting and drum up more interest in the community itself, which will, you know, as the, as the um, shows and events grow, the IFBB Pro League will make more money. The Mr. Olympia will make more money because there's more eyes on it. They're, but they're not looking when, at the bigger picture, no. though. They're not uh, looking at the bigger picture. No, no. But there will be a change, Derek. You know, Tyler Mannion, the new vice president. Yes. He's, I, he is not only very involved since he's so young. Th those type of things you're talking about now that we've been talking about all the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure Tyler Mannion, he's very connected him. to what's going on. I think he... I messaged him like a month or two ago and mentioned some things briefly. But next time I'm going to have a full on conversation about what I'm saying. But Great, to finish okay. up with this, it. it's that it's that there needs to be higher expectations for the promoters mm -hmm. from mm. the IFBB Pro League. 
meaning that they and and using athletes like the top Olympians. So in Dan Solomon could do this. And I haven't talked to him, so you know it's maybe it's something he will do or not. Or I, I think that there's several guys that could put this into play. But instead of giving more money as like just here's your money for the Olympia, top two people or top three people in every division or whatever divisions you choose. Uh, get a contract with like uh, AMI or whatever, and um, they're expected to be at certain scheduled events throughout the year, like oh, almost yeah. like like it used to be, right? That's like an ambassador, like an ambassador. But AMI, yes. yeah, AMI do have contracted bodybuilders, by the way. So yeah, I know, but I, I know they were they were slowing that down. But okay. anyway, this is what I was thinking. Like, if you are giving a contract to you know show up to do a guest appearance or whatever it is. That's getting the athletes more involved, which the athletes getting paid for that also. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, the, and the, like the gears like start it. working a little bit more. He's looking but at the bigger the picture. Thing yeah. is a lot of bodybuilders don't want to do things. They want to stay at home and do nothing. Yeah. That's why we like Derek. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah, why we yeah. like Derek. Yeah. One, one question: Will you compete more if, let's say, you win the Olympia? Will you compete in the smaller shows throughout the year? Some of the shows, or what's your right mindset? Right now, I got. I got to be honest with you. Right now, I wouldn't consider it uh, okay. competing in any other shows unless it was post Olympia. Mm. Why? Yeah, that's like what said, I'm. Why that's why what I'm talking I? about. Okay, only post Olympia. Post Olympia, absolutely. I'm asking for someone to. To put up a, a decent amount, a, a decent venue, yeah, uh, with good prize money that's fair for both people, because um, I know what everybody makes guest posts. You know what the <laughs> you know what the biggest two twelve show would be? What we we get a show, Global Muscle no, 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 no. Pro. after Olympia, <laughs> you put a fifty thousand dollar first prize, Derek versus Hardy, the Battle of the Dude, Giants. If you you said how much? You said fifty thousand dollars first Ooh. prize. Derek versus Hadi. And dude, in, I would show up in, ah. in Europe where Hadi can get his visa. Yeah. I'd show up. I'd show up. You'd show up. <laughs> Three twelve. No, I, I just think it would be so good to have it anywhere from. I don't think the next weekend would be good, but like two, two weeks to three weekends after the Olympia would be perfect. But isn't there Japan and Korea? Still, but their prize money. They not... used to, and I was gonna do the show, but they don't have it. Oh, they're not doing it. Those two pro shows. They were fantastic shows. I, I was gonna, I was gonna do at least he one did? more show, possibly two after the Olympia. Okay. Mm. What about uh, pra no pra no two twelve at Prague? No. No. Oh, I think the only one is Romania, and that's like in November, and I'm not yeah. gonna just stretch it out to that for like another eight weeks. I, the, the 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 total purse is like six thousand yeah, dollars, and again, it's not a, not just about money. Like I'm not. No here just about money like i want the title i want to do a lot of good in this industry i talk about that a lot but yeah I, i've never talked about money but that is something that like i said um this doesn't make sense like why mm. would you show up to hope to make three thousand dollars when you know a, a guy yeah. could make more than that like, so you know the, yeah so for yourself it's really only worth doing the olympia because there's no other post that's what i'm saying yeah 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 what if i show what if i showed up uh you know at the New York Pro, and I didn't I didn't look at my best, mm. and then you're expected to to win the title. That you know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. just doesn't. Mm. That's why I'm a little bit not worried about the 212 class, but all the fans, uh, not all, a lot of fans say 212 is the most exciting class. They say the last two three years, they it's love less, it. It's less predictable it as well. Been. It has more. it has been, but the, we're not making progress. Out of the Arnold Classic, mm. no shows after the Olympia. This is a problem. That it's good that Derek brings it up. Yeah, no, something good. has I, to change. I think it's way easier to just say, okay, um, let's you know, if 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 there's not a, a consistent oh. incline of, uh, if we're talking business, if there's not an, a consistent incline of revenue or you know, things you know moving forward. Then it's easy to just go, and eh, this other thing over here is, you know, taking off. So, eh. mm. and I'm not saying that that's what they're doing in the 212, but if there's obviously, I think like there's some promoters that have come up to me and it's like, well, you know, Flex is not here. I go, you don't think that there's other guys that's, that's coming in to fill that spot and it's just mm. as hungry? Mm. Like, you're crazy. Like, I think it's easy for people to just go, just like the AMI contracts, like or or like MD contracts. It's like I could say, yeah, well, that's probably never coming back again. Why? Like, why is it not? Let's define the reason why, and if we can get to the root of the reason. Maybe we can fix the reason, and then we can bring it back. And yeah. I 
like I said, in my head, it makes sense. Like if you were to have good communication mm-hmm. and the top of the guys were, were more involved, the whole industry will go, grow as a whole. Mm-hmm. And it just, good to me, the, the gears stop turning. When the gears yeah. stop turning, meaning the athletes aren't doing anything mm-hmm. and there's no expectations from the, the right. IPB Pro League to the promoters. Yeah. Like the promoters just kind of, a lot of them, you know, some of them just slap a show up and they just say, here, okay, I hope this, you know, have entry entry uh, competitors and ticket sales. Like they don't even really truly promote a show. They just kind of have a yeah, show. Yeah. And so there's not enough expectations from, from promoters and there are four promoters and there's not enough work being done by the, the professional bodybuilders. Mm-hmm. And so when the gears stop turning, <clears throat> then it slows yeah. of course that, that's that's just part of it and when that when people start working more guess what yeah. you're gonna have more and it's gonna just yeah yeah I, I, this is good uh bob chicarello athletes he always says the athletes needs to speak out more yeah. it's up to the athletes to yeah. demand that she, to and also with ibb mpc it's also important to have a dialogue people are afraid to say something yeah because it's, like, it's considered be single negative. negative yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but it's not about no, it's I, I, everybody I'm, just want to get progress you know and then we need dialogue i'm looking at it as constructive criticism Correct. and i think yeah. anyone as a professional will look at it as it's constructive criticism it is it now is. like i said I'm not saying I'm for anything or against anything. All I'm saying is like, let's do what it takes to grow everyone. Like, mm, and yeah. that's why, you know what? I'm going to make a plug and I'm not blowing smoke up your butt, Giles, for like the <laughs> fifth time. But I love what you guys are doing with Phil. I absolutely love oh, thank what you're you. doing thank with you. Phil. Thank you. Thank you. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Hopefully like... we can do it with Derek too soon. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's he's, great. He's, one of, he's, one of my, he's on my short list. I was a little bit um, um, two years w- w- two years ago. I was a little bit afraid that Derek was getting the push too soon. <laughs> so I was very, I was very, what can I say, apprehensive. You can say. Some so, people still think so too. <laughs> but no. that's no. what's so good, Derek. Yeah. This okay. So when you show that the guest posting, your MD must development. They are a little. They were a little bit. Uh, what can I say? They, they, they speak the truth, the fans there. So they were a little bit uh, worried about Derek. But but this year, Derek, yeah, ninety nine percent neg uh, positive. Big shift about you. Mm. Like Thank you, man. like not because they see how you're speaking, you're t- talking your truth. They see how professional you are, and most Thank of all, you. your physique at this age mm. is cru- It's you. truly incredible, Derek. Yeah. So you, this is this. Thank you. We're on the well, good momentum here. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Like I told both of you, uh, I sent same similar messages to you. It's like you guys are giving me a lot of props and, um, you know, I do get a lot of hype and stuff. But no matter whether it's the hype or the, the hate, like because I, I went through both, you know, um, and I will continue to go through both uh, mm-hmm. as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, you know, through the hate or through the hype, uh, you have to stay very poised and, and just um, – Work on yourself. Like I told you, I said, I think that my physique could have been ready last year. Mm. I think that I truly could have won the Olympia title last year um, by my physique. Now, did I deserve it by my physique? No. I think Flex uh, rightfully won. But was I ready as a professional, as a person, as a champion? I, I might have teased myself. A little bit. I think I was 90% ready to be the champ. I think I would have done a good job had I had mm-hmm. won the title. Mm. I just think that there was a 5 or 10% of going, mm. Mm, you know, this year, I like, um, whether I, I ever win the Olympia or not, I, I do expect nothing less than to earn the title this year. Mm. I will say mm. this. But um, whether that ever happens or not, mm. Uh, I feel as if I'm in a, in the role as as uh, I, I wouldn't say the ambassador, but but um, <clears throat> as one of the top champions who uh, can do a lot of good for this industry and the yeah. people that are fans of it. So I feel like I'm I'm walking in different shoes this year already. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, whether I I earn the title or not, that's not really up to me. Uh, but I will do everything I can to earn the title. But I like I said last year. I felt like I was chasing something versus this year. I feel like I'm walking in the shoes of, yeah. of it. Oh. And I, I hope that doesn't make my, 
make no, me sound too like this. No, not at all. It's going to be a battle with you and Kamal. One question. Where, why, why weren't you guest posting at the Pittsburgh Pro this year? Just, just a question. You, you know, I, I asked the same question. I, I really Ooh. don't know. I, I found it I strange that they had Kamal and not you. Uh, uh, not strange that Kamal was I, there, but you know I, both of you guys should you have been there. You know what I heard it was, AJ? Yeah. I heard Giles had something to do with that. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> you, you were the... <laughs> that might be true because he loves Kamal. Guilty. I know. You know what? Hey, listen, I don't that man, note. I, I give credit where credit's due, and Kamal is a phenomenal competitor. Great, uh, great looking, competitor. He's looking good right now, too. And yeah, I saw the picks, yeah. Him good and good Ashkenani good are two guys. Him and Amad, I know are the guys that's going to be knocking on the door, yeah. man, and uh, I'm excited for it. I'm going to be ready. And he, the Amagish, is back in the mix. Who? He the Yamagishi is back in the mix. <laughs> Dude, I know that guy is great, uh, right? I, I him and Eduardo, I've always looked up to. So yeah, yeah. and and Hide, um, I really respect him greatly, man. And and I'm I'm excited for him to be back. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna throw one other person in there. Who? Freaking guy, Sister Nino. Uh, just be yeah. Just to, <laughs> <laughs> just to make clear, you, you and Guy Sister Nino are good friends, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, not good friends, but you have a good. We're like, we're like buddy, buddy. We talk all the time, but yeah, we're. I would consider him a good friend. I went to his uh, mm -hmm. parents and ate dinner with him and the nice. whole Gasp crew. Uh, him, Sean Clarita, and, and you know the CEO MJ of uh, MJ, the CEO of Gasp, oh, and everyone. God. And and you know what? Uh, he's a phenomenal person. Like mm. like literally like a great human being. Like. He gives back to a, a lot of <clears throat> people in this community, yeah. a lot of high schools. I've seen and it. Like, I heard about it. Nice. He's a great business person. He, he's good. He you know networks well with people, and he's a great bodybuilder. And he go, overcomes a lot of you know challenges in his life. And uh, you know, besides his foul mouth, which I think we all have at times, <laughs> he's, a, he's an incredible role model. And uh, uh, and, and I, I like being around that guy. <laughs> okay, Derek. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. We want to get a bit of uh, hype going for the Olympia. See where you're at. See where you're. Uh, how you've been getting on with your off season? Because um, we saw the guest posing, we saw the pictures recently, and we're all very excited. So just wanted to get a little a quick update uh, for what could be the next two twelve Olympia champion. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe or i'm not or, saying nothing i'm not oh, or, yeah. <laughs> so yeah um yeah thank you so much for coming on derek and no, uh you, and where can people get those t-shirts by the way hey this is not my t-shirt i actually bought this at oh, the olympia last year at the orleans it's not your t-shirt that's not your brand mm, no i i the purchased this at the orleans oh. in the little gift shop Yes, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 by the uh, opposite the arena. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I was like, I have to have it. <laughs> all right, then, Derek. Um, all the best with the prep, yeah. mate. We're just, we'll stay in touch and uh, really excited to see you in Vegas, Let mate. Me, thank you so much. Let me give a quick shout out. Well, yeah. thank you, you guys, for bringing me on. I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors because they've been absolutely amazing. They don't ask me to shout them out ever, but Animal Pack, they've helped me out tremendously from yeah, day one. Yeah. Um, I have now Gas. Uh, the clothing company Gasp is sponsoring me and sending me. Oh, fantastic! Things. You fantastic. just signed with Gasp. Yeah, I did sign with Gasp. Fantastic. Great, so, great, yeah, great, it, great company. It's almost as if like they're like the same type of people as Animal, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. And then Pro yeah, Tan yeah. and Icon Meals. Uh, Icon Meals has been sponsoring me and sending me all my meals. Uh, my code is uh, mm. Derek Ten, by the way. But, yeah, I just want to give a shout-out to them and then, you know, mention my uh, DerekLunsford.com website. Is so it up now? Yep, it's up now. Yeah, good. So thank you so much, guys. All I right, appreciate Derek. you. All right, Derek. Uh, thank you. Take care, mate, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in Vegas. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Bye. Derek. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hang on. Uh, there we go. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that up because we have another guest on straight away. Derek Lunsford, I'm feeling. If you don't feel Derek Lunsford, you don't, you're not feeling bodybuilding, bro. Correct. Um, we're going to have to go straight into our next guest. King Kong, so King, King, we'll King be, Kong. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break with our next guest, Harold King Kong Kelly. And welcome back to MD Globe Muscle Radio here at the Pump Media Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined 
all the way from Canada. 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 Joe Seaman. Yeah. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great debut yeah. at Toronto Pro. Great debut. Yeah, that was uh, it was a crazy day because, uh, you know, I did the amateur show yeah. and the finals was in the morning on Saturday. Mm. And then they, you know, they're like, oh, you can do the pro show tonight. And I was <laughs> at first I was on the fence about it because I was like, well, like I just got my pro card. Like I it was kind of overwhelmed. And then like my uh, my girlfriend and one of my friends, they're like, no, you should do it. Like, I think you, get, you know, be up there and be in the mix. And I was like, OK, well, mm. I had zero expectations going into it. So I just went up there and ended up getting fourth and I was pretty pretty blown away that I was able to get in the top call out it's incredible uh, my first time literally 12 hours after getting my pro card yeah. So for the, the sake of the viewers, I mean, we, 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 like last week we had Phil Heath, Ronnie Colburn, you know, we have all the legends, but we also like to feature the newcomers New talent, like yourself. Yeah. I mean, we had, um, you competed with Quinton Area on a few weeks yeah. ago, and all I saw was one picture on Instagram, and I said, look, I've got to get this guy on. I saw the pictures from Toronto, and I was like, because I'm, AJ likes mass, I like conditioning, <laughs> and I really, really liked your physique. I mean, the readable bicep, the, the separation, the quality, and I just said, like, you know, when you got fourth place, I mean, it's just, wow, yeah. and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a very, very, very high quality show that, I mean, you, it was a good show. you beat some really good physique. So I want to get, wanted to get you on to tell, uh, to, to, to inform people a little bit of who you are. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background? And because literally uh, up till a few weeks ago, I'd never even heard of you, but now I think everyone is now talking about you. Yeah. And I think that's uh, been what I've seen just from some of the YouTube channels is a lot of people had no idea who I was. I think that's part of being in Canada and the amateur stream. Like it was uh, for me, like the last couple of years, I was very close um, to getting a pro card. Like I had a few times where I won my class, mm -hmm. but I didn't win the overall or, you know, I got second or things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been competing now since I was 20. I'm 27 now. Okay, so 27. I started, wow. Still young. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the past like eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and the main thing for me is like I was, uh, I got, bigger faster because i usually like my contest weights around 250 oh. and 510 so um you know i was bigger for a while but it just like for me i just the last like year i was really focusing on bringing in that detail and refining my physique a bit so i can fit in with more of what they're looking for now with the conditioning and the taper and things like that so that's so, one so of the things i've really focused on so i mean before this year what was your most notable placing what was your best result yeah uh, it would have been last year, October 2018. I got first in my class at Canadian Nationals. Uh -huh. uh, but I came second overall, and they only give out one pro card overall. Oh, so no. I was like inches away. <laughs> There's a lot of great talent in Canada. Who have you competed against these last seven years? Uh, in Canada. Guys have, I've seen guys get their pro card. Like uh, just at Nationals last year, the guy that won the heavyweights, uh, Prince Boabang. Oh, yeah, he yeah, got yeah. Third, uh, in his pro debut in the 212 at Toronto. Fantastic. Um, I haven't, like, there's other young guys, like the, the guy, uh, Quentin, that was the first time I ever competed against him when I was on the pro stage. I didn't okay. compete against him as an amateur, but mm -hmm. I got the chance to just at uh, the pro debut. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of too many other guys that are pro now that I've competed against, but uh, there is a lot of guys in Canada that are good. And it's just really hard for us to get to the yeah. to pro level in Canada. So it's like once you see a lot of guys, like even uh, like Dura, he's from Montreal. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dura, yeah. Like once they get their pro card, then they're jumping like right into placing in pro shows because yeah. they've had to like build a pro physique just to get to the pro level. I so in Canada, it sounds like it's very hard. It was like it, it um, up until uh, well two years ago, it was very hard to turn pro in the UK. Literally, uh, only a small handful. You'd have to go and compete internationally, and it was it was a real ordeal for these people to turn pro. And then obviously the split happened, and uh, in the UK now it's 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 a lot easier, and there's a lot of good physiques flooding into the uh, into the pro ranks. So by the sounds of it, in Canada, it sounds very difficult to turn pro because. I mean, I can't, you know, you're, you're this good. You proved yourself in the same day. You went straight into fourth place in a very, very good show. Um, you just, so you obviously think that there, there should be more opportunities for pros uh, to turn pro in Canada. Yeah, I think, I think so. Like, I think it should be more of like a, 
in a sense, like a judgment call on that day. Like if they feel like there's more than one guy that yeah. could go to the pro level, they should maybe have like two pro cards overall mm. or something along those lines. Because there's been a lot of times where I've been, you know, in the overall or right there and then mm. only one guy gets it and there could be two guys who could easily move on and be uh, a good pro right away. But that's salute. <clears throat> but we have a problem that's fixed now because NPC, now you can compete wherever you want. Yes, you can but, just but it doesn't sound like that's happened in Canada yet. Yes, they can now, of course. They can just move, do pros to pros in the UK and, uh, and can compete. You? Can you? Of course you? you can. Can you compete outside of Canada? Uh, yeah. No, you can. Oh, you can. Okay. I have, so there's I have, no problem. Uh, All right, fair enough. I, I just found, like, my best opportunity in regards to, like, yeah. the judges, like, being aware of who you are is more in Canada. Right, okay. Um, not necessarily saying that the judging would be unfair, but I did try, like, doing, like, North Americans and shows like that in the past, and I just yeah. found, like... You can kind of get overlooked if they don't know. Yeah, they're not aware of who you are. So, mm. see what I'm what I'm shooting at is the, the physique you had last year when you just missed out on the overall um, the pro card. How much better were you for Tron? I mean, I mean, say let's take talk in terms of body uh, body weight. I mean, you're very very good condition. So I'm assuming you've always brought good condition. How much better were you than the last year? Because to take fourth, you know, that proves that you were probably pro ready for a good year or two before. Yeah. I would say the biggest difference I made between last year and this year was I brought my waistline in okay. and I came in even uh, even better conditioning and fullness. Mm. Um, I think that was like the main difference. Like I didn't try and like my goal for the off season wasn't to try and add a lot of muscle because I didn't really have much of an off season. Yeah. So I, my main focus was like, I'm just going to get as conditioned as I can possibly get, keep my waist as tight as possible yeah. and try and have a decent amount of fullness just so I fit into the mix. Um, right away. Were you in good condition um, even before you started prepping? Because that conditioning was really like, like really next level condition. I saw at the uh, the Toronto. Uh, I was in a, like I, for me, like it's hard for me to get fat. Okay. I would say so. Like I always find like uh, even in the off season, like I still have abs, um, yeah. things like that. So I was in I was in decent shape when I started. Mm -hmm. I started prepping around slowly around twenty weeks out because mm -hmm. um, I was really focused on this one show. Uh, so I would say I was in decent shape. I was probably, you know, I, I started prep, I was around 275, 280, cool. and then I competed just over 250, I think. Yeah. It's so, a big guy. Yeah, it's a big yeah. guy. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I messaged you on Instagram, it was it last week, and I said, are you doing any more shows this year? After taking fourth, I mean, you, you know, maybe you didn't, you know, expect to, you know, that to happen, that happened. Why did you not want to go for more pro shows like Vancouver or Chicago or, you know, because you're fourth uh, place, you're right. You know, there's no... British Grand Prix in British Grand days. Prix, you know, <laughs> you, you know, just, uh, I, I, why? And also think, one... Think, oh, for me, it's not a matter of uh, not thinking I can go into those shows and be competitive. It's just a matter of mm. I want to take the, do it, do it right, in my opinion, and just take the time to make more improvements because for yeah. me... Every time I step on stage, I want people to be like, holy crap, like, and you're he made a lot more improvements. Yeah, and you're 27, you know, like, so. <laughs> yeah, so, like, for me, next year, like, next year, my goal is to qualify for the Olympia. So, like, that's oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That's what I want to focus on is just making improvements now yeah. to next year and then come back and, you know, surprise some people again. Yeah. When you turn pro, how long did it take to you got to compete that day in the, in the pro show? Uh, in this last Toronto, how, how long was that uh, separation? How long? When did you turn pro? Was that the day before, or was uh, it the same same day? Same day. So yeah, how same many day. how many hours later do you step on the pro stage? Uh, well, I turned pro. It would have been around 11, 11 a.m. And <laughs> yeah. then the pro show was at like seven p.m. So in in those hours, yeah. how do you <laughs> feel? Then are you like excited? Are you happy? Are you like, oh, what am I gonna do? Or do you have the time to think, wow, what just happened? Or those hours because that's very few hours. I honestly, like, I just, like, I, I feel like I was almost more relaxed mm. at that point than I was before because I was just, like, I had so much, like, you know, focus on getting that pro card. And then yeah. once I got it, it was, like, a huge relief off your shoulders. Mm. And then, like, you know, deciding to do the show the same day, I was, like, I didn't have an expectation of placing. Mm. So I think that alone made me very relaxed going into it. Yeah. And I just, like, felt like my look, my look was probably even a little bit better by the time I got on stage just because I was so relaxed. And I was just like kind of chilling in between the show, getting a little <laughs> bit of food in, and then just went back out there and did it again. <laughs> so, so what was it like being called out? I mean, you said you were in the first call out, correct? 
Uh, well, in the in the prejudging, what they did was they called out uh, the top four, yeah. or what was believed to be the top four at first. Okay. And then they called me out in the second call out. Yeah. But then they moved me right to the middle. So in my head, I was like, I think I'm top five. <sighs> and then, uh, so then at night when they called this out again, the guy they had, I think it was uh, James Hollingshed. Yes. He was in that first call out. Yeah. He ended up in uh, a sixth place. Uh-huh. And then they had me in fourth and Quentin in fifth. Yeah. So. Like that's some talent, dude. Uh, yeah. James Hollingshead has placed third this year in the pro show. Yeah, the Spanish big man show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eighth so... at the New York Pro. Yeah. So I mean, you, yeah, it's just uh, yeah. So what improvements are you going to make? Like you said you're going to take some time off. What are you focused on for the next show? Um, I think, but one of the things, like I know my conditioning was good, so I'm not uh, too worried about coming in <clears throat> more condition. But I think my main focus would be to add muscle in the right places to improve, like mm-hmm. mainly my shot, my poses from the front I feel like are my weakest like front double bicep front lat spread and maybe even improve my back width to have a wider lat spread from the back and the front Mm. um and things like that like I know my back shots uh, like my back double bicep like a lot of people had mentioned like it was one of the best in the lineup yeah Mm. um so I feel like those shots and my side shots are stronger than my front so I need Mm. to focus on making those improvements and a little bit more muscle there in the right areas to make sure I'm competitive and mm-hmm. have a complete look. Do you do your own diets? Do you have your own coach? Do you have a team around you? How's this? I, I have like a small circle of people. Like they're not my coaches, but just like my girlfriend, okay. some friends at the gym, like people that are in my corner. But uh, I do most of it all like myself, like when it comes to the diet and the training and everything, mm-hmm. like I just... I like doing it myself, actually. Like I find, yeah, I have right. worked with coaches That's in the past, I, yeah. <laughs> um, but I always find, like, when it comes down to it, like I'm able to dial myself in better than if I listen to someone else telling me what to do. Well, you are a coach, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, coach yeah. so yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Did you, <laughs> I, I, yes, because there's no reason every new pro needs some type of guru to do never all these used things. To. They never know? used to. Never Before, used to. Before it wasn't like that, so it's nice to see that you're keeping it that way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, I like I've I've had experiences in the past where it was like I had a coach and then I felt like that I didn't peak as well. And then since I've been doing it myself for the most part, like I've figured out better ways that like my body responds, mm. especially in those last couple of days, which are crucial um, to really. And I really felt like the one what I did for Toronto, I felt like was like the best uh, combination in the last few days with like water manipulation and food and everything. So I think that's probably my. What I'm going to stick with going forward. What's the response been like from the Canadian bodybuilding community since you've come home and uh, you know you've 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 really stepped up now? What's the response been like? <clears throat> well, like uh, a lot of people that knew who I was were just like they're just like, well, finally this guy won. Like <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. they're just waiting for it to happen. You yeah, because like everybody was like they couldn't believe that they were like, you know, holding me back in a sense. Um, But I've gotten a lot of good feedback and like some of the, you know, like especially from the guys in here, out here that are pros, like they've all like said, you know, even, uh, you know, Ian Valliere, he lives like in the same area as me, about probably about 30 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And like we were talking the other day and he said like, yeah, like I'm sure I'll see you in a lot of first call outs next year. Mm. And so, you know, to hear that from him, he's like won a pro show and been on the Olympia stage. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely see you on the Olympia stage next year. Absolutely. But to get on Olympia stage, we need to see more about you. You know how it is. So yeah, now, well, you, now, you, <laughs> now you're a professional. How are we going to take, how are we going to see more of you? Is there any projects you are going to be in? Is there any YouTube channels? Is there, because you know how it is. When you turn pro, you're a professional. We need to see more of you. Mm. What will you do? Yeah. To, yeah. Do you have any plans in that direction? I do have like plans to be more active with my social media, doing like some videos and stuff. I don't know if I'll get into YouTube videos per se, but definitely on Instagram, like mm-hmm. posting more videos and trying to be more active and uh, in general, mm. just to get more exposure that way. Because mm. uh, I know like, especially in the past, like I hadn't put as much focus into it just because I was more focused on the, you know, getting the pro card, the training and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I think that'll help because um, obviously I don't work with any, I'm not affiliated with any companies or anything like that right now. So. Are you going to be at the Olympia this year to spectate and uh, mingle? 
Yes, I'll definitely be yeah, able to see yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta be, man. You're one of the, you know, the the, the hot new talents of 2019. You know. Mm. So, okay, do you have any final questions? Just one thing. For, you for ha- did you have any sponsors, or no, you said no? Uh, no, no sponsors. So you're available for for a good company to contact you. Good guy to get on board. Yeah. Good guy. <laughs> Mm. I mean, Canadian bodybuilding's like uh, it's gone crazy, isn't it? Really? Yeah. You got Antoine, you got Ian Valier, you've got um, you know, Regan Grimes, is Canadian, isn't he? Yes. Uh, Quinton. Henry Pierano. Henry Pierano. Yeah. Now Joe. It's yeah. like wow. It's um. I th- yeah. I think that. Yeah. I think Bumstead, we need to see more opportunities. Yeah. yeah Bumstead, Chris Bumstead, of course. Mm. M- uh, Melissa Bumstead. I think we need to see more opportunities for them to turn pro. But uh, also, we need to put more, even more of a spotlight on Canadian bodybuilding because with guys like Joe coming through. It's uh, it's more than more than deserved. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like a lot of people don't expect it, but then all these Canadians just come out of nowhere and start placing, <laughs> and everybody's surprised. But it's like you know we're yeah. we have we have the, the the trouble to try and get the pro card, but once we get it, it's like we yeah. can finally show mm. you know what we've been working on for the past so many years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we wanted to get you on just to get uh, get get the word out about you know Joe Siemens because. Uh, Absolutely incredible new talent. I was so excited because, like I said, I'm a conditioning freak. And I was like, oh, the condition, the separation. This is what I want to see. That kind of level of conditioning is what I want to see in all the pros. I mean, Mm. can you imagine if, like, the top Olympia guys had that level of crisp separation and quality? It's like... uh, it's 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 something that is is um it's it's more scarce than I'd like to see to mm. be honest and it's so it's fantastic to see yourself Joe up there and it's uh, and I'm so glad you got a fair shake and you got a good looking you know being called out with like you know guys like yeah, yeah and John Della Rosa and you know it's like and you're you're taking out big guys you know big names so it, it proves that the judging is on point as well and it, you're getting the, the new guys are getting a fair look in Joe mm. so uh, anyone you'd like to thank or uh, any any um yeah any thank yous for sponsor well not sponsor thank yous. <laughs> Uh, well, I'd like to thank you guys for having me on the show for sure. It's our pleasure. Um, and just thank you to uh, you know the Canadian Physique Alliance for giving me the opportunity to do that. You know that pro the pro show the same day. Mm. Um, Ron Hash, who's like the the president, he you know he made sure I was able to get up there in the same day and everything, even before officially having my actual card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just like the judges as well for giving me you know a fair look and everything. Yeah. And I felt gotcha. like they. Because it was the IF, it was all IFBB judges. Like Tyler Mannion was there yeah, and such. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did get a, a fair look, and they they did remember me from like past shows, and mm-hmm. they could see the improvements. And were, <clears throat> I think that's what uh, really helped push me um, into the top call out in the pro show was mm. uh, them seeing those improvements and recognizing me from the years prior. Yeah. Mm. And also, if people want to contact you for coaching, how can they get hold of you? Uh, if they want to contact me through coaching, they can. Uh, Message me on Instagram, mm-hmm. which is uh, at Coach Little Joe, um, and I have my email on there as well, so they could just send me an email um, to contact me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is, is that so smart though? Uh, with your name, shouldn't be your name on Instagram? We always because sometimes it's hard to find well, people. He's, now he stepped up. Maybe that is a consideration. Yeah, I'm just saying your Instagram Dude. name. Is it better to have your own name? I'm just wondering because I but you type and... it in, it will come up. Though. Okay, it will come up. Yeah, if someone okay, can put okay. his name in, it will yeah. it's like, like it's, um, uh, Derek Lunsford is Mr. USA okay. 2017. Well, I'm not an Instagram nerd like you, so. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. great having you on. We're looking forward to seeing your progress. Yes. Uh, in- very interesting talent. And all these guys are so young in Canada. What's going on? Well, <laughs> so good, so young, man. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Seeing guys under thirty. I mean, just to see guys as good as yourself and you know under 30 and making an impact right out of the gate it's so exciting it really brings a lot of fresh new exciting blood to the sport so uh, what city were you from again in canada uh, what city uh, i live in i live in ottawa ottawa okay. oh, ottawa, okay. ottawa yeah yeah okay. cool love being there <laughs> all right then joe um yeah hope to hope to bump into you at the olympia mate come up and say hi if you, if you see me walking past or whatever and uh mm, yeah we'll have definitely. to grab you for an interview and try and build up this promo and uh and, and get the word out because uh, i think you're someone who's on the rise yeah <laughs> definitely. thank you all right joe thank you so much and uh we'll see you soon thank you perfect thank you bye-bye 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 you. bye-bye, bye-bye. 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 He has some Canadian good eyes. You know the <laughs> eyes that you know he's not lying. Oh, I see what you mean. You right, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not like Ian with his contact lenses. Very good. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting to follow his progress. I didn't realize he was 27. How old did like, you think he was? It's like, well, no, I just didn't. You no, know, no, I know. He's so good to be that good that young. It's like uh, guys like that really 
they're not that at level that level to that like mid thirties. Imagine you turn pro, and it's eight eight hours later, you're fourth place at a pro show. <laughs> Called out with John De La Rosa wow. and, and Valier, and that must uh, be a mo- like um, what a buzz, what a day that well, must be. It's like he said, the pressure was off because he got his pro card, and anything else then was a bonus. And he's coming away with prize money as well. But it's good. Thing is, it's. Like it was a high profile show. The Toronto show is a Toronto Pro is a very very high profile show. Do you like that approach when you when you place high in your first show to take time off to improve or or is it smarter to go and do some shows, see where you stand, no, let, the, let the judges see who you are, let the mm. fans see you mingle. No, he's, he's get some sponsors. He's made a statement. He like he said okay. he only went for his pro card. He said then the pressure was off because he wasn't like everything else was a bonus. So at least now I don't think he'd have made any more impact by doing more shows. And plus, he probably doesn't have the experience of competing more than once a year in a time. So he's already done one show. It's like, oh, what else is he going to prove by going and getting a third or a fourth or a fifth? Or a second, or a first, even. And would he, even if he Wait, had got, if he gets first, that'll prove a lot. What are you talking about? Then you get yeah, the Olympic I, I know, but then yeah, but he's, you know, he's still, he's still young blood. He's mm. still got a lot of improvements to make. And he's, uh, thing is, he's, like I said, he's twenty-seven. If you got, this this mention all the, all the top guys under thirty. You got Rafael Brandeo, who's like twenty-five. Your hero. <laughs> it won't come on the show. My boy, tell you, called him. <laughs> Who doesn't want to come on the show uh, for some strange reason? But we're yeah, okay. Yes, yes. Um, and then you've got <laughs> Quinton, who's like twenty-four. Um, Sibu Sisu, twenty-seven. I mean, these, these. Derek Lansford, the freak, Derek, 25. 25, 26, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got these. I mean, when you get guys, um, Nicholas Valud, and you got like, well, Luke Sanders is about thirty-one now, so we can't put him in that list. Yeah, so. Nick, how was Nicholas Valud again? 27? Uh, tw- uh, 27, he's 212, isn't he? 212. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, get, I get extra excited when I see good new pros coming through and they're really under 30. I just think that really gives them enough time to really progress, really improve, <clears throat> and <clears throat> and really uh, and really move up. So I'm very excited to see what he will bring. Glad he came on the show. Yeah, very glad he came on the show. Thank you, Joe. And uh, yeah, so we'll be, uh, we're going to go to another ad break now and we'll be right back with... I don't have a Coca-Cola here because I don't drink Coca-Cola, <laughs> but Wins Taylor. Green green tea, maybe. Part two. Yes, part two. So, yeah, uh, check that out. I'll be right back after the break, and we're out. And welcome back to MD Globe Muscle Radio here at the Pump Meter Studios, joined by my co-host, AJ, all the way from Norway. And we're joined for part two. But f- by the way, that's the first time ever. Yes, it is. First, yeah. we, we were so impressed last time, Wins. Do you want to tell him to, who, to maybe who it is? Vince Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you haven't seen part one. Uh, did you like our first interview, Wins? Loved it, man. I love this backup stuff. I saw little snippets online and everything, you know, just bringing people to the point. Man, you guys are geniuses. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And do you want to know how much preparation we've done? For, I've done for part two? Okay. None. Let me think. Because we don't need to, Vince, because you're such an... Honestly, AJ, what was the response like on, on Vince's? So, I mean, bearing in mind who we all... Some of the guests we've had imagine, on in the last few weeks. So we had Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, Margie, and Vince. And... 75% of the comments on social media were about you. Yeah. Wow. And how, so that's... So it's, they it's talk says, about the old man. <laughs> <laughs> so Vince, when you said last... I said this, um, me and AJ were talking in the restaurant later on. I said, uh, when you said... You, you actually said in the last episode, in the first part, you said, oh, you, you thought the bodybuilding fans have forgotten you or the community or whatever. It was along yeah. those lines. That is simply <laughs> not true. And if they didn't know who you were before, they certainly do now. And there's a lot of love for you, Vince. So we, that's why I'm so happy about getting you back on, mate. And, that pe- and thank you guys for bringing me out there, man. You mm. know, putting the put light on the brother again. I appreciate that. <laughs> and that picture I showed you from Harold's gym in Norway, you're the one signed it. You remember that? Do you remember that? Dude, I, I can think back because I signed so many of them, <laughs> but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can remember every single one he signed. Like, okay, no. for the people at home, this is part two. Mm-hmm. We, last time we spoke, we spoke about the master class. Mm-hmm. There you go. Let's go straight into it and keep the interview going. Yep. Part two. Part two. Continuation. So we're into master's class. Tell us people at home, what's the master class? <laughs> I knew yeah. that's what he was saying. I knew he was going for the Coca-Cola. I had to get it right. Get the juices flowing. Yeah. We've got, yeah, we've got people all over the world on a meat and Coca-Cola diet now as well. So uh, yeah, looking to get big. <laughs> so the master's class. Tell us what went on. 
Um, <clears throat> let's, let me tell you how I got in it real quick. Yeah. Right? Um, it's and like some of the stuff you want to hear starts right there. Mm. What the Masters was one of those things when I was I was mm. rolling. I'm in them with these young lions, as I say. I'm the old guy out here, right? I'm already 38, 37. These guys are 20s, mid 20s. So when the concept of the Masters came along, with Joe Weider was wanting to do something for, I might take was Lou Ferrigno. You know, Lou's a good friend of mine, oh, yeah, yeah. and I think Joe had that opportunity to um, to do something with the Masters Olympia. You know, to magnify the older bodybuilder. Keep him up there. Keep his name going. You know, it's just a legacy of bodybuilding. You know, yeah. making you can continue to do this sport because it's a lifestyle. And if you're competitive, why stop? Because you're at a certain age. And he just made it rewarding. So when he came came together with that insertion of the Masters, Mr. Olympia, it was like, wow, that'd be cool to do. Because where I was, 96, I turned 40. So we back up a couple of years. Mm. I'm already getting snipped from behind by these young lions. I got mm. Wheeler out here. Mm. I got Leverone out here. I got Dillett out here. Not so, you know, everybody's biting hard. Mm. And for me to be happy in the sport from bodybuilding was like, okay, I'm a little older. I can't, I don't think I can hold these lions off, you know, because these guys are good too. Yeah. So I'm moving up in age. These guys are just moving in. So when Joe made that master's thing come up about uh, two years before I was eligible for it, it was like, Wow, so he made this competition for Lou Ferrigno, in my opinion, and Robbie Robinson spoiled that because Robbie won the show. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that, 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 that didn't go too well as planned. <laughs> I remember, yeah. That, that's, that's the inner portions of bodybuilding. And um, I saw it as me being able to continue on and still do what I like to do, not worry about, I got to go beat this guy, I got to beat that guy. Because I'm, I'm not out there trying to beat nobody. I'm out here trying to have fun. And so when the Masters came around, I got my lights, my sights locked on it. I had made myself think. I said, wait, Vince, you're top five in the world right now. Mm. If you did the Masters, you could win the Masters for 10 years before anybody bites you back. You know, because yeah. I'm looking at my nearest mm. competitor. Masters was so age 40 to 50, correct? No, 40, 40, yeah, past 40. Over 40, 40 plus. Mm. Just over 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, a, I'm like 38 looking at it. I'm going, like, okay, and I seen it pop off. It was nice. And even had a sandal. I was like, wow, you know. Uh, Over your my shoulder? closest I got to my sandal was the Open Mr. Olympia when I got third twice. You know, yeah. people don't realize that. They don't know that. They just say, well, Vince competed. No, I did the Open Mr. Olympia too. I got third twice to Lee Haney. Mm. Okay. So the point was it's if fun. I wanted to continue bodybuilding, have fun, here's a monster event Masters Mr. Olympia with the prestige. Mm. I could win it for 10 years. That was my goal. And then ten when I'm, it's ten years. <laughs> wow, ten years. I'm gonna win this ten it's, years it's straight. Look, I'm forty. These guys are <laughs> thirty. By the time they get to forty, ten years, bro, I can yeah. just roll with this, right? Yeah. And it was all charted out. I had liked the idea, so that's that's why I got involved in it and started thinking about it. But as it came around and things in bodybuilding were starting <clears> to <throat> shift gears on me, you know, as far as what I thought was, you know, my placings were getting crazy. I didn't think my body was falling apart. It was just I wasn't being I wasn't fitting in like I was normally. Yeah. There were shows I knew I should have been winning, but yet I got second. Hmm. I'm thinking, you know what? It's OK. You hear conversations. It's part of the game. You move on. Hmm. But I'm thinking now the Masters will be my stomping ground. So speeding up to that Masters, I turned 40. And um, I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be the move now. So I called my buddy Wayne D'Amelio and I said, you know, uh, I'm going to I'm going to do the Arnold Classic and uh, the Masters Mr. Olympia. And and then, and then he said, whoa, 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 slow your roll, Vince. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, OK, what's going on? He said, uh, you're 40, but you can Pete in the open Mr. Olympia or the Masters Mr. Olympia. Oh. You got to make a choice. Oh, really? And I'm like, I sit back. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute now. Sonny Schmidt, bless his soul, yeah. I mean, he won the last one, and he competed in both Olympias. That's correct. Robbie Robinson won the first one, and he competed in both. So now when I'm telling everybody in the world when I turn 40, I'm going to do the Masters, Mr. Olympia, and now you're telling me I have to choose. It's so weird. But yeah, go Very on. weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, why would I have to choose? Okay, I'll just do the Masters. So... That shocked him and, and didn't shock me because he was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. But my whole avenue changed him because I downsized my training. I did everything because my goal was different. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't have to train like I used to train or continue training the way I was mm -hmm. to compete, compete with these young lions. What I'm going to be, I'm going to be competing with age appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I know what's in the masters. And I'm thinking, wait, Vince, 
you're top five in the Mr. Olympia, but yet you're going to do the Masters. Who going to beat you? So now I just said to myself, adjust everything about my career, my goals and wishes, do the Masters. Mm. And once I was told... So how did you train differently? How did you sort of adjust your training to do the Masters? Because you're not exactly, um, you know, I mean, just over 40. I mean, I'm, you know, you're still young. Right. It was my, my routine had always Prep been, time. I trained twice a day. Okay. Uh, seven days a week. Oh, wow. I trained an hour in the morning and two hours in the afternoon once I was able to do that professionally. Double you know, sets. Before for I was the, working and training like everybody every else. For every day? For the prep yeah. or throughout the year? Out the year. My oh, training has wow. never changed from probably from 84 to now. Do you remember all the double you know? sets on cables as well I used to do? Those yeah, are, those yeah, are some yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. We all did it. We all did Kate. I was like, oh, reading my book. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, well, that's, that was I, my. I know. Standard. I wrote the book actually. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of started um, uh, just looking at training and saying, look, I don't need to train like this to compete to beat these guys. I have to train more to keep my physique. Longevity, you know, this is yeah. not about trying to add this and add this to mm. be competitive. And I think that's the biggest. Uh, carrot that everybody chases in the lower ranks, you know, younger ranks, because you're trying to beat the guy in front of you. So you're going to train hard. You're going to do this more. Everything it magnifies to try to win. Mm. But the thing about it is you still work with the same body. Mm. I noticed that when I got 40, I could still train less and maintain what I still had. Mm. So my whole concept downgraded. I started training less. You know, I was training once, a, well, not two hours a day, but I kind of like backed it up to about an hour, you know, for body part. So now I'm instead of training one hour in the morning, two in the evening, it was one and one. It's not okay. that much so, downgrading though. But. It's not that. That's much. why I only train legs once a month now. So. <laughs> Since I turned forty, it's not that much. No. It's, it kind of changed more mentally than anything because yeah. I took myself out of that drive. You know, to, I want to train hard. I want to beat them. You know, I'm like. Keep what you got and yeah, but, beat these old guys because you're an old guy. And but that's in, all it took. In 1995, that was your biggest. That's the biggest I ever saw you when you took fifth right. place. You would, I mean, you were much bigger than you were in 91. Um, yes. Yeah, so obviously, you know, that was you, 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 you probably knew that getting fifth place and coming in bigger, you were just going to have to keep getting bigger and bigger and freaking freaking. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. My thing was I needed – I knew – Going into bodybuilding, it's a funny thing because I told Dexter Jackson the same thing uh, years ago before Dexter turned pro. He, I was guest posing in Florida. He came up to me. We were talking. He was like, man, Vince, I, I want to be like you. What I, what I got to do to be like you? I said, first I looked at it because Dexter was lightweight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, first of all, you got to be about 230 pounds. First of all, you know, that's what you got to do. And we just start laughing. And lo and behold, today, Dexter's like 230 something pounds. And <laughs> Crazy, okay. Yeah, Forty nine years old. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was gonna say but what happened. Then, yeah. Ninety five was a good year for me because I saw everybody. You mm. needed to know as a bodybuilder in that big picture of competitors, you got to match up. Mm. And you got to match up first on stage. You can't bring a light physique mm. and everybody's my height. They're bumping the stage at two thirty and more. And I'm like only yeah. 220 something. Plus you, that ain't gonna kick it. So I had to get bigger. You had Dorian there, who was kind of just getting bigger and bigger. Then you had Nasu who came along in '95. Oh, yeah. He came, he gained like remember from '94 to '95, uh, he gained like some like 15, 20 pounds. And of course, absolutely. the the sport took a step forward in terms of size in '93 with Dorian. And then you had Nasser, and then you had Dillette, and then you had you know yeah. Fuchs and all these guys who just. <laughs> so I can see where I can see the thought process now. Yeah. So, you know, to me, that's why all these things came together. And it was like, you know what? As a bodybuilder, you're out here for one reason. You're out here having fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the biggest thing. You're having fun and you're doing something that you're pretty good at. And you can travel the world with it. And you can have fans and people. It's, it was a great, it's a great way to go. Mm -hmm. So I just said, you know, find the next avenue to continue doing what I was doing. So the Masters made that to me a, a avenue to say, hmm, if I can get – 10 send dollars because Haney has eight. If I can do what I'm doing, I'll get 10 and I can do my own legacy. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna magnify and, and bring out the Masters, Mr. Olympia, because Joe Weider was talking about muscle and longevity. Mm -hmm. You know, what better picture than an older guy training competitively and, you know, and going on? You know, let's promote that. Yeah. I mean, these guys didn't even look at me, man. I was like, shoot. <laughs> You didn't even know I won the Masters because when I was trying to win them, it was like coverage was – you wouldn't even find it in the magazine. So to your okay. first Miss Master Olympia, what happened? Oh, God. I'm happy, guys. I'm going here because um, this is going to be my debut to do something different. I'm training different. It's new physique. And, but the thing about it was it was – I saw how it was operating. As soon, I mean the way the show went on, guys, it was like I'm in line ahead of this group last year. 
the masters were going to come off before us. Just the exped- expediting backstage, they treated us like garbage back there. Really? I In mean, what, the what guy. Way? Um, they they would bring us on stage. Okay, because you imagine, I'm used to the, the royal treatment now with the normal group. Yeah. Then I'm going to do the masters. <clears throat> it's where was it California? Where where they did it at? And it's a big event. So we go on backstage. It's okay. Everybody line up and blah blah blah. So that's cool. Masters, masters, we're the masters. We're gonna go out at one o'clock. It's only twelve o'clock now. We're going out at one o'clock. Where's everybody? Everybody's over here in the position. Okay, that's good. Next. That was it. Ten minutes before the, the event started, and they come looking for the masters. You know, it's like you're not even gonna tell us when we're gonna get ready, where we're gonna be. I just, ah, who cares? Come on. You know, just, just, we nothing to warm up with. We were just backstage. You know, it's like this wow. was a joke. But anyway, mm-hmm. it was it was it was the Masters. So I go out, I do my thing. I'm going to win this thing. I'm looking for my trophy. But my whole thing is this, guys. All I want, because of all I've been through, all I want to do now is win the Masters and start collecting my soldiers, which is the Eugene Sandals. And that was the only reason I was on that stage. Like I want my Sandals. This is why I'm competing. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So we get to the event and everything is going well. I'm winning it. I'm happy, you know, and. Uh, we're downstairs. It's the event's over. Presentations are coming. I never forget it. I'm standing backstage, and I hear uh, Wayne Demilly. He's on the microphone, and he's talking. He's like announcing everybody and stuff. And in the winter, and will so and so bring the gold medallion to uh, and the trophy to Vince Taylor? You know, I'm like yes. <laughs> Strut it on out there. I'm all happy. People clapping. Like, it's cool. This is cool. And all I'm looking for is um, Wayne's talking to Vince, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And Joe Weeder comes out, you know, hey, Joe. And he puts the medal around my neck, and I'm just the victor this day. And I'm still looking left to yeah. right. I'm like, where's Listen Eugene? Yeah. Where's, where's Eugene? Where's Eugene? Yeah. They didn't even bring it. <laughs> yeah. So Wayne says, all I hear is, thank you very much, Vince. Eh? <laughs> and I'm looking, and I'm looking. I said, okay. So I, I walked off the stage, walked toward the podium. Yeah. I'm looking at Wayne, and Wayne looks at me and says, oh, we forgot the trophy. It's in my room. <laughs> oh, you can give it to you after, no. after the show. This was sabotage. This was planned. It has to be. This had to be. I'm looking at him. AJ, I'm looking at the dude, right? I'm thinking, what? is this any of this is how you run a show? And behind him, swear to God, behind him, in a box, was two sandals. What? Okay. In a box was two sandals. Two. Ronnie won. Okay. And there was the second sandal. And I'm looking at this thing going like, okay. So I just went on left, you know. And then my wife came around the back. And we talked a little bit. And, you know, she said, no, you ain't got to bring it to his room. I'll get it now. Yeah. You know, so that she she got it from somewhere. I don't you know, because so I had already left. But what would the reason the reason would be to make you not compete the next year and the next year and the next year? Because they didn't want to win you all them tri- trophies then. I, I, I don't know What's the reason? Um, because to me it was so baffling to say, well, look, OK, this is Vince Taylor. I ain't nobody's arch enemy. I win the show. At least who has a championship and don't bring the trophy? It's weird. Huh? Right. Why so I it? said, OK, not a problem. Okay. Not a problem. You know, I got my trophy later on and uh, kind of took that moment away. Yeah, so the, the speed up to the next year. You know, yeah. I'm thinking, OK, we're going to go through this. So I brought my other tr- I brought the trophy with me next and next time. I said, you're not going to do me this way. OK, so we get to the event and uh, I win. And then they call this out. I'm looking. I'm looking. So Wayne's standing there, you know, everybody's smiling and stuff. And then Joe comes out. He's holding the trophy. I'm like, if you ever see some video recording coverage of that, Joe's got the trophy. And he's holding like this. I'm reaching for it. Give me <laughs> Thing. What was this? So 90, that, sorry, was sorry. Flicks, what, what, year was, what year was this? Was this ninety-seven or ninety-six? That was, had to be ninety-seven because the ninety-six was the first one. Of course. Who yeah, did you beat in ninety-six? Just for the people at home, who did you beat in ninety-six um, for the for just the second place? Who came in second? We can just do second place. Honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> in fact, I remember none of my competition. Was it Sonny Schmidt? Was it was it Sonny Schmidt? So, was it Sonny? Might Could have very well been. Had yeah, he passed? Yeah. No, 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 but then. Not by okay, then. so the second year, you jump for the trophy. So, second year, I got my trophy. I'm happy, you know, guys, and uh, right. everybody's smiling and stuff. And then you got to understand now there's talk in the backgrounds. I'm hearing already that they're not going to do the Masters no more. Uh, they're getting ready to get rid of it. And I'm like, Jesus. So that's when I, I was told that um, Jantana was yeah. going to do the Masters. Okay. So I'm thinking, all right, I'll do the Masters. So she calls me up. 
You know, Vince, I'm going to do the Masters. Would you be interested in competing? I said, if you got, hey, if you're going to do the Masters and you got the Eugene Sandow, I'll have it, Vince. I promise. He's just laughing. I promise. I'll have it. I'll have it. I said, okay, then I'll do the Masters. Hmm. Not a problem. So we signed up for the Masters, the third one. We get to Virginia. We're doing what I guess it was in Virginia. We're doing what we're doing. Show's over. I win. Come out to the stage. I can see her standing there right now, smiling and carrying on. And and uh, Wayne's at the microphone. And it's, it's pretty decent night. So I'm just like, and the winner, Masters, Mr. Olympia, Vince Taylor. So she comes, gives me this big hug. And she got this weird face look on her face, right, Jan, uh, Jan Tana. And then um, Wayne comes over. And the guy behind Wayne is carrying a, a, a trophy about this big. What? I'm thinking, what's that? You know, Mr. Brings me the trophy, presents me the trophy, and says, Vince, I'm sorry. The trophy didn't show up. No! We have to send it. No! I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, this is the third year. <laughs> I'm getting confused now. Didn't you want to slap Can... him by then? or like? What's no, I was just looking at him, and I'm going like, you know. What um, is the deal with this? I feel you. <laughs> wow. Been yeah, there, I've done, heard the story, that. so I'm just. It, it, uh, been there and done that. That was number three. That's number so three. Let's speed it forward. We'll speed it up again. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm, I'm competing and I'm hearing thing rumors. Now some guy is popping up and I'm hearing from different people telling me, well, you got to watch out, man. This guy's really good and he's going to be beating Vince. I'm like, well, just bring it. I'm not afraid of nobody. Just, 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 just do the show, man. So we go back down to Virginia. We get there. And I'm looking around, and I'm seeing a bunch of crazy stuff happening. Then they talk about this one guy uh, who looks really great, and he's going to be. I'm like, ain't nobody going to look great. I, I'm fifth in the world. Is this okay? Dong Dong we're talking about now? Yeah, exactly. Oh. And this guy, he's, he's, he's kind of big, and he's kind of cut. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. Who is he? He's 50 years old. Do you know where I just came from <laughs> with these young lions? Hmm. Okay, but nevertheless, now we're on stage. We're down here with this guy. We're competing, and then – um. I recall after the prejudging, it, to me it was another cakewalk because that's what I do. I walk into the Masters event. We get to the warm-ups. I look everybody over, and I'm going like, nobody's new. That means the same result as last year. So let's just get this show on the road. We get back. We warm up. We go train. We, I go win. I get my trophy. Or they mail it to me, and I go home. Right? <laughs> <laughs> FedEx. So here, here we are at number four. So after that fiasco went by, we come yeah. back. I'm thinking, all right, now here's young blood. We're sitting in the room, and the guy tells me, uh, at about, was it um after the prejudging? A friend of mine came to the room and said, "Man, Vince, this this contest is super close." I'm like, first of all, I looked on my shoulder like you wasn't talking to me. You got to be talking to somebody <laughs> behind me. So I'm like, so who are you talking to? Man, this is so close, Vince. Uh, I'm telling you, if <sighs> you don't pose tonight, man, it's going to be over. And Giles, this is the first time I'm probably 10 years old. This is the first time ever. I, I opened a magazine yeah. and did not understand what the F was going on. I was 10 years old. Okay. <laughs> this was a scandal. Let me be the first to tell you. Oh. I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is crazy. So we go in and um, they're talking about I had my judges. I called them the hit squad. I had the old bodybuilders there. I got Richie Gaspari judge. I got John Hananashak judging. I got this other judge there. These are some of the guys I competed with already. And I'm looking at these guys, and they're judging now. So now you got a different relationship. Mm. I call them the hit squad, okay? Because <laughs> when I got down there, I'm thinking to mm. myself, all right, Richie and I got a little story. Nice story, but it was cool. You know, you didn't speak to me when I was hurt back in 86 or some stuff in New York, and I was pissed off at you ever since. And when I met you at the Olympia, I beat you, and I was happy with that. And that was a whole story <laughs> within itself, okay? We'll leave that alone. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> back to the Masters. So, guys. I'm at the show. When after the prejudging was over, I knew I was winning this thing, and she came and told me this. I'm thinking to myself, "This is nuts. Mm. Who's going to beat me?" Okay, nobody. So boom, we go down there, we get to the show. I see who they're talking about. We battle it out. We do it all. I win by one point. Oh no, it's not this one here then. Okay, no. yeah, yeah. I win by one point. One. Point. I'm thinking to myself, "Ain't this a trip?" Mm. But I got the win. But I know they're after me, and I don't know why they're after me. All I said was I was going to win this thing for ten years, but that's okay. Maybe that's too boastful. Back to the script. Show's over. We're on stage. Everybody's happy. Bum, bum, bum. We talking. I walked. I go I go to get my trophy. <laughs> and Wayne says to me. No. The weather. The trophy didn't show up. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. 
<laughs> Did you I ever date uh, Wayne Dimulus' uh, ex-girlfriend or something? Was there something? Something? I don't know what it was. There's. I don't know what it was. Uh, I be something. I I'm, I'm very baffled. Wow. What did you say then? I just looked at them, guys. I'm saying that's the point they show you they have no respect for you yeah. because they can yeah. do whatever they want to at, at any point in time. Yeah. I didn't take it personally anymore because I felt there was – this was the downside of bodybuilding for me when I was watching how the pleasure was going out of it because mm. the, the very thing that keeps you in there is winning and having fun. And when you can't get that – you know, you win, but you can't get recognized for winning. You're not getting written up about because of you're winning the Masters. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, you know what? Let me just circumvent and go back into the Open and start competing in the Open again. Yeah. Maybe that'll help out. So I started going back. So you notice in my <clears throat> record, because I just had opportunity to look at it, some of the records, I'm like, why did I not place in England that year? I got like seventh. <laughs> I mean, that was... that was me, Lee Priest. 97, 97 that was. Yeah. Me, Lee Priest, and Paul Dillette. I yeah. mean, we just we just stumped the place up. NASA, now, Chris Cormier, I was there. Yeah. I was there. I saw you backstage. Now, me, I had said I wasn't even supposed to be there because my mind checked out when I started doing the Masters. Mm -hmm. And my training stuck with my type of Master preparation. But when I signed up for them Grand Prix tours, okay, because I wanted to get back into the fun of bodybuilding, yeah, yeah. I forgot I had to compete with these young lions again. Hmm. And man, when I showed up at that show in 96, my record was like 6th <laughs> place, 8th place, ninth place. Vince Taylor ain't gonna pose tonight. I was like shocked. <laughs> like, this is like, but it was self-induced, yeah. and I got it. That's when I turned my training back around and started getting back into the Arnold Classic, for example, yeah. you know, and then started doing the other shows. But when I, with the Masters, it was the point to me that's telling me, when they Gave, didn't give me that next trophy. It was like, you know what? Hell with it, you know? Next year, I was just going to win it and just keep on moving, get my 10 and move. And then the following year, the next match, the last one I did, it was the same conversation. Oh, this guy's going to beat Vince this time. I mean, here we go. He's going to beat Vince now. The same guy who yeah, got... this was the I was talking I, about. I'm going to talk about the guy, you know? He, he had more flaws than I could have cared to mention. Uh, the guy passed away. You know, he tried everything to, you know, to get that victory and, and just caught up with him, I guess. But he didn't have the physique to beat me. But they at the end of that show, we were in there and it boiled down to the prejudging. After the prejudging, there was a conversation about posing. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine came up to me and says, Vince, in your posing routine, you got any curse words or anything like that? I said, um, no, nah, but I was thinking about, well, he said, damn you know what the hell you know and he said we're down here in virginia man in the bible <laughs> belt so you gotta watch out because they don't want the words oh and God. show you know might offend people <laughs> i'm thinking okay. okay so now we're sitting in the audience yeah. watching when the prejudging is over and we're having this discussion about music now i have my preloaded cassette with the terminator and everything else on it mm -hmm. but i was going to use roy jones guys because i was really pissed off mm -hmm. okay roy jones song at that time is y'all must have forgot OK, if you go back and you listen, if you go dial it up, and you listen to him. Y'all must have forgot where he dropped different people in different stages of career, how he knocked people out. I was saying me and Roy got a similar parallel in bodybuilding. See, y'all don't know who I am. I was cleaning up these guys. Mm. So y'all must have forgot who I am. That was my new posing routine music. So it was it was going to be hitting pretty hard. So I said, nah, I better not use it because I got some curse words. So. So let's speed it up. Now the show is going. We're going through the show. I'm figuring out. Yeah, I, I got this, you know. Now it's time to post. So now I go up with my cassette, and everybody's in line. Everybody's lined up mm. backstage. So I come up with my music, and the guy's – I'm number four in line, I think. And the guy said, Vince, you got your cassette. You don't have the cuss words on it, do you? I said, no. Nah. Okay, okay. So I gave it to him. Mm. We're on stage. And uh, the music doesn't play. Everybody else is playing. Mm. My music doesn't play. So I'm like, what's the problem? It won't play. It won't play. Man, give me the damn cassette. I took the cassette out. All right, maybe because are they playing games? So <laughs> cassette. I went into the back. It's not a CD. <laughs> no, no, no. Of course, it, they're, yeah. they're, they're screwing I him. I was wondering what was going on. My my music won't play. It's a CD. I didn't just create this thing. I bought it. Yeah. Right. So now it doesn't play. So what are you going to do? Let me go out and find me another routine. I have no clue. Wow. My brother was there um, at the show. Rested. So he just passed a couple years ago. And um, I remember him sitting in the office. He was screaming, hey, play the song, you know, and they, was, they wasn't playing it. So I go out in the back. It's raining outside. 
I'm in the back. My brother comes around to the back of the building and I asked him, do you have any music in your car? He said, man, because he's always got my love songs on the ballad songs. Mm. And he just happened to have Cheryl Lynn and my boy. If this world was mine, mm. I'm like, that took me back to 89. Now, I know I can pose on that because I just throw that together. <laughs> so I got the cassette. I run. Guys, I got I got bronzer on me. Yeah, I'm running outside. <laughs> it's raining outside. OK, it's raining out in the parking lot. I'm out in the parking lot posing, trying to put together a quick routine wow. to run back into the building to get back in line to go on stage. Right. So I go. I, I got his cassette. I run inside, give it to him. I'm back in line. I come on stage, put the cassette in. He hits it. No music. What? The cassette doesn't work, Vince. The cassette doesn't work. Again. Again. So my brother's going like, track two, number one, what y'all doing? He's screaming at him right from the back of the audience. And I'm just standing with my hands on my hips like this. So my man started singing the song. My friend of mine, he's an MC. I was, I was like, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't going to pose you singing. You know, he's just laughing. So the song didn't play. I just started posing anyway. You know, fuck it. I just jumped on down, started posing. The crowd started screaming a little bit. Not what I wanted to do, of course, but I just I could pose. So I let it go with that. I'm done. Get off stage. People are happy. We finish. Stand up there at the end of the day. Now they're talking. Oh, this is great. This is great. Who's it going to be? Who's going to win? So I get second place. All right. It's so like, wow. They, they got me. Like yeah. that. That's all in my mind. They got me. And then when it was done with, I got the papers and it says, yeah, Vince lost by two points because he, he lost the posing round. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, I wow. Said, I lost the posing oh, round for this guy, no. right? Here's a, and here's a guy who couldn't, in my opinion, couldn't even couldn't pose in the phone booth, okay? Yeah, yeah, a yeah. phone box. He was but not a good he poser. wins the posing round. I lose his masters. And that's when I said, guys, I got enough. I'm done. That was it, man. They just, you know, airmail my trophies. <laughs> What year was this? That was my last one, 2000, what, 2002? 2002, yeah, because um, yeah. Yeah, Don did the, the, the... But hang on, he did the Olympia that year, didn't he? The actual Open. And Olympia. also, there's a guy from Norway, Guy Borgen Paulsen. Yeah. yeah. He's in the Paulsen. show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he was in third place, and he was way better than Don Youngblood. Absolutely. Not even close. Yeah, he was awesome, yeah. Right. So he came third it's to not like, one year. It was not like Don Youngblood, rest in peace, of course, we're not bad-mouthing him no. but he wasn't even in fourth place there was nothing to do with this there was show. The, wow i couldn't believe it but i saw we saw what was happening because mm. again when you start hearing about what's going on in, throughout this, the the, uh, the industry mm. and then you started hearing well remember that guy was at the show last year well he was paying so much extra money to, to you know because for the event he's a sponsor and he's a competitor I'm like, what? You know, mm. we get down to the venue and he got this big old live-in bus parked out front where nobody could even park. But that's my man's van. You know, he's he's paying for the sponsorship and stuff. But again, you know, those <clears throat> little sneaky little dirty things in bodybuilding, I thought that's what killed me. That took all the fun out of everything. So I, mm. I said to myself at that point, I'm done. You know, Vin. sorry, Vince, uh, let's talk um, if you want to talk a bit more about that. Ooh. Absolutely. Okay. I want to um, talk to you guys about good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, talk about 2006, the Australian Pro, because that was a big shock. Not only the fact that you did that show, but the fact that yourself and Francis Ben Fatu came back looking so bloody good. Mm. Tell us about that and yeah. why. Thing is, you you had you obviously had three years out. What? Well, right. nearly four years out. What gave gave you the impetus to come back? What was the uh, the motivating factor? Um, it was the lack of having something to, to do as far as employment, mm -hmm. okay? As a professional bodybuilder and what I was doing for all these years, this is what I know. If I'm not competing, making money, going somewhere, doing seminars and stuff like that yeah. in the fitness world, then that's one thing. When I hung up this, the, uh, the game, it was like, what do you do now? Yeah. You're not – nobody wants, wants you to guest post, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So there's a revenue situation. So my thing was – Man, I got to try to find some way to make me some money. But, and everything I was doing wasn't happening. Yeah. You were with Pinnacle. I, kinda... you know, I remember you were with Pinnacle. Do you remember Pinnacle? Yeah, Pinnacle. Back yeah, yeah I, remember you, I remember you. I remember the Olympia that one year. And you were, I mean, there was still a big, it was a huge crowd attracted. I remember you were there. It was yeah. such a busy stand, you know? Oh, yeah. It was crazy. They were my rescuers because before Pinnacle, I had my weeder contract. Yeah. Mm. After the Arnold Classic, I didn't have no more weeder contract. You were with okay. Cybergenics, though, weren't you? 97. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for one yeah. year. One year, okay, okay. One year. Okay. And then when they 
when they stepped off, Pinnacle stepped in, and that was like the always upwards. Right. When we just when we just shut down, it was like, okay, take your thirty thousand, which is cool. You're giving so and so seventy because you like him. That that was the thing about these contracts. Yeah, right? that's what I want to ask it, about for, for for today. How much did you get in 1997 in a contract? Oh how much man. did you get I, paid for? Like, how what was you? Well, you don't take exactly numbers, but what type 30 grand. of thirty grand a year? We started the first contract that was even issued. It was like, call Joe. Well, how do you get a contract? You know, how do you get one? You got to call Joe. Okay. I don't know Joe. Why should I call Joe? You know, if I thought by me winning some shows, let me show you what I can do. If I'm winning here and here and here, you might want to put me on contract like you're doing the other guys. And I just had met Paul Dillette and Paul was telling me how, you know, this is how you got to play the game. You got to call these guys, man, getting getting close to the top shit. So that's what we thought we were doing. But as far as money is concerned, I was offered a thirty thousand dollar contract, which was like it was the greatest thing in peanut butter. Mm. But then, you know, that I got thirty And I remember called a German kid I got I was talking to a year before that who not did he just turn pro, Akin Albrecht. Akin Albrecht. Joe yeah. Weider. Yeah. He loved Joe loved his German guys, you know. <laughs> so when he came over, he was trying to do something in Germany, knowing very well. Um when he got his little pro card, he was he got a seventy five thousand dollar contract. Akim Albrecht. I'm like that much. Seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Did he win I anything? Just won no, he got show. ninth. He got ninth at the 1991 Olympia, and I think he came third in the Chicago Pro one year. But I think that was pretty That's much as high as he got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, was quite, he's pretty good, big legs, See, but um, not like a top six Olympia guy, really. There you go. But the whole thing about it was, your contracts was just a gift. It was nothing standardized. It was a gift. Joe liked you. He wanted to give you a contract. That was the way it went. So okay. my got. That's why I got to. And then after I was going to. Asked for more by winning the Arnold Classic, okay, and of course I didn't win it, and then Kevin won it, so therefore I didn't have no contract. The Cyber Genesis copped in; they came right in with almost a hundred thousand. So I was like, wow, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. Then Pinnacle came in right after them, even though I still wasn't getting no love from the Weeder camp, you know. So I was like. You can't put you can look. You, I can't win shows. That's fine. You got me second here. You're not giving me no publicity. That's cool. I don't care, but I can still make those dollars because somebody else is paying me. So you ain't gonna you ain't gonna you're not gonna keep my money out. Mm -hmm. I don't think they appreciated that too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where are we up to? So I just I'm completely engrossed in these stories now. Uh, come back <laughs> to come back to the Mr. Yeah, no, the yeah. no. I want to talk about the 2006 when he came back in 2006. I want to I want to understand why he came back. Okay. That was a good one. The whole mindset behind the six was once it was driven by the fact of I got to go do something, you know, mm -hmm. can you do can you do bodybuilding again? How does mm -hmm. it look to get back into this? You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm moving around. Things are going not great. You know, I, that's when I basically tried to tweak some things wasn't working. So it's like, okay, well, go back and compete again if you can. So my choice, my idea was go as far away from the United States, you can and go compete just to see what you look like. You look good, guys. You look so I put that good. I was so surprised. Worked. Yeah, that, that shocked me. Yeah, you, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I think that was some of your best conditioning ever as well. Yes, it, it, I was shocked. I'm like, <laughs> my, my wife shredded, shredded. <laughs> my wife, like I said, she always is my training and everything at, at every show and getting ready for every show. If I can't get the nod from her when we get ready to compete. Yeah. Then I know my work is not done. Yeah. Mm. That morning in, in Brinsburg, uh, in Australia, we were at. When I got up that morning, she looked at me and she's like, "You need to go to the gym now and compete. We need to go to the auditorium now. You looking crazy." Mm. I'm like, "What are you talking about? What do, you, what do you mean?" I'm looking in the mirror. I'm going like, "Okay, if you say so," because I go with her. Mm. And man, it, it was just a good looking physique. I was shocked, mm. and I trained differently for it. I didn't train like crazy. I didn't do nothing ridiculous. I just kind of went my own general way, and reapply what I knew. And the physique came out nice. Yeah. But it only got me as good as it did on stage, is because when I knew when I left Australia, mm -hmm. man, people were just popping off. Did you see Vince Taylor? Oh, he got sixth place. Bob Chicarello. Hey, mm -hmm. you should have asked Chicarello about that. Because he was trying to do the Masters at that time. Oh, they, yeah. were they were wondering if I was going to do it. Yeah. You know? yeah that's what his whole concern was. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, man. So why, why are you doing the Olympia, Vince? Why are you doing the Olympia? <laughs> of course I can. You yeah. know? So I qualified for it. I'm back in it. Back I thought open. I looked fantastic. Yeah, yeah. People were crazy. 
you know, I was like, wow, we're at the Olympia, we're in the event. You know, you kind of got it a little bit. And these guys who may hear this, they'll know that feeling when you're backstage in the dressing room and the reporters are walking by and all the people are walking by and they stop stopping, they start taking a double take, looking mm. at you like, psst, 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 but take a look at Vince. Hang on, just for, like, just for a bit of perspective, yes. Vince was back at the Open Olympia 17 years after he took third place. Now, that's almost the entire duration of Dexter Jackson's career. Uh, we remember those uh, <laughs> Road to the Olympia videos. 89 yeah, to, yeah, 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 but yeah. 89 to 2006. And he's in the Mr. Olympia again. Yeah. 17 hey, years. And that's where you also created your training equipment also, wasn't it? Those, exactly. We can talk about that later. but mm -hmm. that's, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that Olympia thing was so good, guys. Because you got to think about this. Here I am. I got shot down in 2002, but the old man's master. So I'm ticked, you know. <laughs> oh my and I, now oh I come back. <laughs> well, that's what it was, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, if I can't be old man, why should I even be bodybuilder? So that's why I shut it off. And then when I got back and put that physique together and got back to Vegas, I just, I just thought I wanted to be competitive. You know, mm. if I can just look competitive, that's all my goal was. I wasn't there to do nothing else. Mm. And like I said, I walked past the I, Peeled off. We were back in the locker room, and uh, I could see these guys right now. They're walking by the door, and they're peeping their heads in, and <laughs> here comes a re uh, some of the writers and stuff. And like, man, take a look at Vince. Take a look at Vince. Yeah. And guys like, man, that's top five. Easy. That's top five. I'm hearing this from. I'm like, what? It was, it was 50. <laughs> Talk it was 50. about me. Yeah. It was 50. And like, you. Ha thing is, normally when guys get to maybe four, around 45, you can see the physique starts to age. The triceps started to creep yeah. up. You know, there's certain ways right. it atrophies, but your physique hadn't atrophied in any way. You didn't have any loose skin. It was. Not, you exactly. couldn't tell. I mean, you. You know, you literally. You looked as good as anyone did. So you were 50 in 2006. 50. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I felt great, man. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> for a 50-year-old man in the Olympia, yeah. this is okay. Who would win? Now, if, uh, you at 50 or current Dexter Jackson oh. today at 50? What physique would win? And try, well, you're not going to be a little bit biased, um, of course, but who's going to who's gonna win? That'd be a good comparison. I would give it to Dexter. Because okay. I think Dexter is, is a he's, – he's more – of a, a complete bodybuilder for what well, my uh shortcomings are his strong points dexter mm. is a really good total package yeah, a great. really good total package from balance and quality uh I, i'm just amazed with how he put that physique together i just see where the physique starts losing now is the midsection mm -hmm. you know i never liked the you know extended stomach now and it's starting to look you can see in that stomach the age and that's the only thing about for me and dexter's physiques that was that's the easy call. I would go Dexter. Me and Leveron. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah, I ain't fifty. Say 50. It. Oh, 50. oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say it. Me and Leveron. That's a different story. That's a horse with a different. Like, different <laughs> <laughs> but you know, do you know what it was, Vince? With your physique, the two thing, <clears throat> the two attributes your physique had, that really, really stood you apart from everywhere else. I remember when that time in '95 and. I remember. I do. I. I remember. Um. I put your. I put. I want. I. I remember commenting on how small your wrists were. Like wrists. Yeah. And you said. Uh, I said, Vince, can I just put my my, my hands around your wrist? Because I went like that, and I can't. I can just about <laughs> touch my wrists. Mm. And I went like that, and there was space, and his wrists were like a. They were like a. They were like a girl's like that. <laughs> and then he had these huge forearms. But what it was, he's got tiny joints and huge, joints. huge muscle bellies. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like yep. the early Flex Wheeler, those tiny, and it just creates Absolutely. such mm, an illusion. Yeah. So you can be 230 or whatever, and I'm you're beating guys at 270, yeah. 280 because I, your knees are like that. I mean, I, I, it's incredible. <laughs> Honestly, I remember, I remember your wrists, the tiny little wrists on exactly. you. Exactly. And then these freaky <laughs> arms and muscle bellies. It's like, and that's such a, because bodybuilding is a real illusion, isn't it, Vince? Yeah, and that's what it's all about. That separates everybody from everybody. It's just that first look. Yeah. If you see that look, I mean, it's just like bodybuilders, almost like eggs. But then you, when Flex Wheeler popped out, for example, yeah. it was like, ah, how do you make a physique like that? <laughs> He's got everything, you know, the little joints, the flowing muscle, the full bellies, the small waist, taper waistline. You got to draw that. You can't. Yeah, yeah. You got to wake up looking like that. You can't. It's like a sculpture. That it's like a sculpture. Man, that's that's just too great. I had a few of those little attributes which made me uh, what I was, you know, capable of bringing to the stage. Yeah. That's why when I saw different physiques, like you beat this guy, I can't out muscle him. That's what everybody wants you to do. Out muscle somebody. 
but um, a smaller physique, a well balanced, well uh, designed. Who's that young brother? Um, Roly. Uh, I like this kid, man. He took. I thought he was gonna win the Olympia, but he got he got third last. Roly year. Winkler. He's not as that Winkler, the brother from um, Bonac. Oh no, Hol William Bonac. William Bonac. Bonac. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. kid. Okay, mark my words. I said this uh, two years ago, and I seen him pop up last year. I was like, you know what? This guy's got it. Yeah. This guy is that. He. This is Dexter's replacement. He can forget it. What Dex do you like? What that. do you like about William Bonac's physique? Oh my gosh, it's just compact. It flows. He's at that point to where he he's about ready to push the limit, and this is where his problem is going to be. Mm. And I guarantee you, if he don't fix this, he will stop right where he is right now. That stomach area mm. is starting to protrude. Okay, he's getting he's he's getting outside of himself. His physique, if you can draw a silhouette, stay within your silhouette. Do all your training to magnify how you look. But to add on that size, and then you start seeing that stomach get thicker and thicker. Vince, it takes away that whole look. Vince, that's going to be his downfall. I said exactly what you've just said after the Arnold Classic, and I got a bit of flack for that. I don't know why you were point one, uh, dead on. Oh, no, no. I'm like, this guy's killing himself. If yeah. he and that's the, guys, that's the problem. That's for years. It never stops. Guys always want to get bigger. Yeah. I've always said, stay in your lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're never going to be the biggest guy out there. You're ne somebody's always going to be bigger, right? Mm -hmm. But you can for your physique. Draw the lines, stay within the lines, train within the lines. That's how you want to look. Train for your look. But they just train the, the power way. They get the power look. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing different about them anymore. Two questions, Vince. What was your favorite look that you brought? Because we saw you in, in two, uh, uh, 1991. We saw you in uh, 1995 when you were bigger. We, you've, mm -hmm. you've brought a lot of different packages. Which was, right. your, which was your favorite? And also, why did you not do the 1993 and the 1994 Mr. Olympia? Um, wow. I can't even think. <laughs> I got I to gotta remember why I didn't do them. Um, the best physique, I think, may have been and to be totally honest with you, I don't think I've ever really hit the physique, the the, the total conditioning look that I would have loved to have had. Mm -hmm. Every picture I've seen recently, when I look back, they all are like that far away from peak condition. Yeah. I never really hit that condition. So I'm not really – I was never really pleased with any other looks that I had because it should have been finished. But um, when I won the Arnolds, that was a, that was a decent Chris look. 92, you know? 92. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah. one of my better looks. Um, yeah. I think I don't think I've ever had that top top grain look. That that's the thing, guys. I like the '95 British Grand Prix look. I like that. I like. It that. wasn't bad. And it, you know what? Was... And you know what? I really like that 2006 look because I think at the Australian Pro, I didn't expect. Oh. I know you. I know because you were. <laughs> I just. I think. I think I like that one most because I think no one expected it. What place did and you get, by the way? He took sixth, but the fact he six. came back after four years, and I just think nobody expected him to even. One, they didn't expect him to come back, no, and they didn't expect 50, him to look. At age 50, 2006, what place did he get sixth, again? Sixth, he got sixth. Sixth at the Olympia. But he, no one expected no, no, him no, to no, come no, back. No, no, no. It was third. At the Olympia, 2006. Yeah, at the what place did you get? Oh, the Olympia, Olympia. sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm on about the Australian. Where place yeah, did you get? Give me 11th, man. That's not bad at age 50. No, 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 no. You got to let me tell you the story. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> oh, you've got a story for that. You got a story for that place. Okay, Tell I got a story for everything. Uh, I love it. We're love in it. the mix. We are in the mix, and we're in the mix deep. Yeah. And as the as as we came from backstage, and everybody's just talking and talking and talking, I begin to think, what are these guys looking at? You know. Mm. Well, when we got on stage, we're in the lineup, man. Everybody's lined to rock and see it like yesterday. And uh, I had Sean Ray on one side of me. I remember talking to Sean later, and uh, Melvin Anthony and a couple other guys. So. As they started calling people out, mm. you know, you know you in the show when they go down the lineup, mm. okay? Yeah. I'm standing in, the, in, in, I think I had number eight, ninth place, whatever number I was. I was three quarters toward the front of the line. And when they came across pulling everybody out, comparing and comparing and comparing and just jumped right over me, okay? Mm. Just jumped right over me and went to the next guy and boom, boom, boom. Went down the full lineup and then came back, jumped over me again. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm not even in the show. I'm not even in it. My physique doesn't even worth a, a look over. You're not even going to compare me. So at the third round of judging, they called me out with some guys. And Sean looked at me and said, hang in there, kid, man. I, this, wow. <laughs> wow. I said, Sean, I said, man, just, just hang in there, man. 
went up there. We did a little few comparisons. We left the stage, and that was it. Um, that night, I did get 11th. And then we went. To, we were doing a photo shoot at the Mandalay Bay. I was with Pinnacle. Yeah. We were doing a photo shoot, and um, I'm laying down on the on on the mat, and good friends. And I, I said it, and on tape, but I, I kind of left it out there. Some people like I said, some good friends of mine came up to the photo shoot, and asked me personally, who did I piss off, like that. And I'm like, well, you know, nobody, man. He said, Vince, I judge the show. OK, we judge the show. I'm telling you right now. No, you shouldn't have won the show. It's no, I'm not going to send blue smoke to me, but there's no way you're going to win the show. But you were top five. You were top five. I'm telling you right now. I called you out for comparisons and they would not bring you out. Hmm. He said, who did you piss off? I said, I don't know, man. That's how he said, no, we had the judges. We asked him. They wouldn't compare you. I'm thinking, wow. So I asked Pentacles president at the time, I, you know, the guy I was working with. I said, Steve, come over and listen to this because he knew him well. So he's like, what? he said, hey, listen to this. He said, they wouldn't compare you. He said, I don't know what you did. It's personal. It, this is personal, Vince, because mm-hmm. in my book, you should be at least top five. Now, who told me that? My boy Jim and his wife, Juliet. I ain't going to say no last names. Okay. okay, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Netherlands, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he told me that, I said, Jim, wow. You know, he said, man, it's personal, bro. Yeah. But that showed me right then that there was a problem. And I don't care how long I stay in bodybuilding. When I left, it was a little, and now I come back in, it's a little. So it's like, and even in Australia, you got to understand in Australia. I went back to Australia twice. The first time I went back to that competition, I got third. Mm-hmm. Should have won. When the question in my mind, I should have won that show. We had a little problem with the, the – the, who was this? Grant, the guy who – organizer, Not judge. Tony. Right, okay. I think his name was Grant. What it's it? Tony Doherty's that would have been the organizer of the of the show back in the well, 2006. Well, one of the judges – Tony's my friend. Tony's a good guy. I love Tony. good guy, yeah. yeah. Um, no, the guy who ran the, uh, the judges – I forget his name. He's an old-time bodybuilder guy too. If I think of his name, I'll let you know. But uh, there were some issues about us showing up on time in different places. So I'm supposed to do a seminar. I mean I wasn't doing all that crazy stuff. And he's up. they all mad at me. So next thing I know, I'm getting third place out of the end of the day. But looking, like, you know what? But looking back, where does something might – did you act a way that was controversial? Or if you're looking back at it now, maybe And you, I will do that. Yeah. I'm going I'm to do that for you because I have done that many a times when people ask me. Mm. And, um, and I've heard – when I hear people say or read something sometimes online, how oh, Vince was very controversial. I'm like, controversial? I live in South Florida. I'm down here in Miami. I do not care what goes on in bodybuilding, in California, none of that echelon. I don't have no contact. I don't talk to nobody. I do what I do. do I you, compete. I do what I do, and I'm done. Do you think they, I'm not verbal. Do you think it was expected that you were going to move from the East Coast to the West Coast? And then when – Not even. No? No. no. Um, not at all, only because uh, – Being one of the top guys? You would – well, how, my disappointment to that was – when you in the magazines, like you, you know my career, I'm in the magazines one year. I'm looking at everything. Next year, I'm on stage with this guy. Next year, I'm talking to Charles Glasses. Next year, I'm talking to Wayne Demilius. You know, these are the inner works in the bodybuilder. Hmm. So now you you want to be part of this. So you don't know anybody. So you you're, you're kind of stuck out. And I didn't try to gravitate to anybody. You know, I just showed up and did what I did. Stay professional in what I'm supposed to do, and that's it. That's Vince Taylor reputation. Yeah. But I now mean- in bodybuilding. Where did I and who did I have conflict with? Any of the judges? Nobody. I never let that bug me. Mm. You know, I stayed away from all of it. So, AJ, I don't even know why I got that shadow. Mm. I don't understand it, but it was there. And because, again, again, coverage was never there. Nothing about being an Arnold Classic winner compared to what was these guys have was one after me, and even nowadays. I mean, everything I did was so low key and so rewarded. Yeah, but yeah. I want all these masters. You wouldn't even read about them, okay? Have you talked but to Wayne DeMille after this? Have you ever talked? I to talked him? to Wayne on quite a few occasions. Wayne's a good guy. I like Wayne. Okay. Always did like Wayne. Um, Wayne's a rover. Wayne's a shaker. Wayne was Mister Bodybuilding, the Mister Olympia and bodybuilding, IFBB bodybuilding in the '90s, '80 and '90s. Wayne DeMille, he ran that show. Yeah. Okay. You called Wayne DeMille was the man. So. I had no poor with Wayne. 
um, because I'm one of the older guys. You know, I remember talking many times on tour and, you know, talking about some of the younger kids and, and stuff. But, um, you know, he had his way of doing things. He's a promoter, manipulator. Wayne is Wayne. If you know Wayne, you know what Wayne's all about. You know, watching Wayne operate from the outside. I didn't never mix into his business. You know, I see what you're doing. People are, you know, you're making your money. You pull the strings and everything. He's a, he's a shyster. I'm going to tell you right now, he's the biggest fucking shyster. But he's a good guy in his own right. He was okay with me, but uh, he, um, he 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 was manipulative. He had ways to do things. He was going to get them done. Mm. You know, he smiled in your face and let you know he's going to stab you too. You know, he wasn't. <laughs> On to current things. We see your shape. We yeah. see how you look at uh -huh. age 63. Can you tell us more about what you created? Yeah. Absolutely. And, That's the best and thing. And please do it for. A, sometimes you heard you explain. I can't even understand it. So do it slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I created what I call, let me show you one here. I call the Vince Taylor Grips. Okay. okay. Precision training. This is a precision training. It's a handles, you know. I got them as a single version, and also I got them as a double version. Okay. okay. Now, I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing with these. I'm creating a new way to control resistance. I'm creating a new way to intensify isolation of a muscle. All right. So what I was able to do and because I came up with this, it was when I tore a, a tricep tendon back in the day and I was doing rehab. So as a rehab exercise, I was just doing regular exercise that we were doing and I was just using the regular hand grips in the gym. OK, so when I had taken the off the cable machine, I had taken the, the triangle shape handle off and I was just using the cable like many people probably do today. You know, yeah, there is yeah, a cable with the, and the ball at the top. With a, there you go. I was yeah, grabbing I've done, I've done my exercise. Triceps. I've done it for years, you know. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was when I found out that um, the ball was slightly bigger on the cable machine and I had placed the ball between these two fingers as I was engaged in a conversation, talking to somebody. Mm. So when I placed it in, I started extending my arm doing a tricep extension, you know, to attack this tendon here. Yeah. And as I did the exercise, I noticed that I was able to isolate one head of the tricep. Other two heads were kind of like less activated okay. by placing that ball between these two fingers. So when I placed between the middle fingers, the exact same thing, I felt the resistance of that outer tricep head. I felt the resistance shift to the rear tricep head by placing the ball between the finger. And then the middle finger here, the pinky finger, the same thing. It shifted to the inner portion of the tricep. So what I found was a tool that would allow me to attack isolate and totally train that one muscle with more resistance than the other muscles in a group because I could single it out. Mm -hmm. This gave me a potential, a precision way to single out a muscle. So as doing that and seeing I can control the contraction of the muscle and the, the uh, resistance that I needed, this was a way to get this muscle refertilized and everything and back in shape. Okay. Well, it's the same exercise I do when you do regular tricep training. Mm -hmm. So that made it an exercise, period. Not for rehab purposes, but just for training. Mm -hmm. But what did it do? It gives you potential to train certain muscles that you normally would train altogether. Because when you make a fist, all you're doing is putting together a power move. Because you're training with a barbell. Mm -hmm. And the barbell is designed for you to make a fist. If you make a fist, you're going to activate all the forearm muscles and the flexors, plus you, you're putting your any muscle that you're going to be training at standpoint because you're going to be able to train with it with possible power. Yeah. So it's going to be a full force attempt. My way of training, and I'm, again, we're talking about handles. It's like if we're trying to train the bicep and we're using the barbell, we're curling it. So therefore, we're still training the bicep. But now, if I had a product like that, which my grips, the place between the fingers, now I'm training the bicep. I wanted people to think about how the bicep looks, like a ball, mm. okay, a long ball. Take that bicep and divide it into three sections, outer, the middle, and the inner. Mm. By doing that, placing the ball between these two fingers and then curling it up the same way, I felt the resistance run right down the outer head of the bicep. Mm -hmm. So when you place the ball between the finger here, it runs to the middle of the bicep. You feel the resistance shifting internally in the muscle. So I'm dealing with muscle fiber now. I've got contraction going on in certain sections mm -hmm. of the muscle more so than the other section. So what does that mean? That simply means I can stay in this zone, target this muscle from normal training, looking for a better quality of stimulation, contraction, which in turn feeds its way into better growth. 
Yeah. Okay, it's just the whole process. I've created a tool that re- gives me a chance to redirect the resistance. The beauty of it is it makes you train in a capacity to use lighter weight. So you f- have to use lighter weight. When so did you f- create this, by the way? What year? Um, ninety five. Oh, ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. Because Back there, I mean, because I was using it for myself. Yeah, you know, yeah. For because- the longest, and then I stopped using them, and then. And I started bringing them out a couple of years ago. Because for arms, you always, I mean, I remember being really like baffled how at the time, because I was following all like Sean Ray and Kevin Ravones, all those training routines, he- uh, heavy weights, free weights. And I remember just reading that like um, you did a lot of cables. And I was yes. like, how do you, and I thought I was always under the understanding from the magazines and stuff that you couldn't build big arms with high rep cables. I mean, I, you know, Dorian Yates would have just like, <laughs> you know, it was like, no, 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 barbell curls, preacher curls, you know, concentration curls. And then you came along and you were doing like kind of lighter, but set after set and who of had cables. Best biceps. Oh, yeah, fantastic arms. No, compared, he had better biceps than Dorian, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I know. 100%. Yes, uh... <laughs> No, we he's very biased stuff, towards. Uh, no, I'm not. Throw him up. No, but it worked That's for. Not. But Vince found the way that worked for him because obviously. So, what body part can you use this on? Biceps and Every, triceps. Everything. What do, okay, this, for legs? These are, what do you mean? Just training handles. These are training handles. Okay. Mm. Um, your triangular shape handle. All we're doing when you're using a handle, think because we got to think bar. Okay. Mm. All you're doing is gripping a bar. By gripping the bar, the mechanics involved in gripping the bar, it activates all the muscles necessary to squeeze, contract, and then, of course, do whatever kind of movement that you want. Every muscle works linear into its same kinetic chain. Yeah. So we're done there. What these grips do, they simply you put your hand in a position, okay, rather than having a closed fist, because here's the difference here. The closed fist is going to activate the forearms. Mm. Every mm. time you close the fist, you're generating power in the forearms. So every muscle you train is going to get a secondary resistance help because it goes through the forearm. That's mm. where your power generates and starts. Then you get to the muscles that you're training. So my thing was if I now – I have to do that because I'm holding the bar. You have to control the weight. Mm. But now what happens if you're holding an object and you can still train the muscle? But the object that you're holding versus the bar, your hand is in the open position. Okay, mm. that takes you back to that old, the old thing, that fat grip, mm. the big round grip. You can't squeeze yeah, it. Yeah, the yeah, hand's yeah. in the open position. What you've done by opening position is you've deactivated the forearms. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now the forearm is is helping a minimum of 75% less in your movements of mm. of the weights that you're doing. Here you have 100% activation. You got 100% help. Here with this grip here, now you have 70% non-activation, okay? Mm. So now what you got to hear is you're bypassing the second power point. You're going to the bicep and or tricep, chest, back, whatever you're training. Mm. The muscle that you're training is now working more by itself than it ever before yeah. because the form is not helping anymore. Mm. So now when you're training the chest or, let's like I say, the bicep, if you were simply con- – at the end of the day, you're, you're training to contract the muscle, mm. any muscle. This is why you're lifting that weight to create that contraction. Vince, Let's where, get past contraction. So Vince, where can you get these from? And is Vince there... Grips.com. Vince and Taylor Grips. Vince Taylor Grips. dot com from Amazon. And is there a place where you where you and demonstrate Amazon. how it works? Instagram. On my website. On your if website. You got, man, absolutely. If they look at my website, Vince Taylor Grips. dot com, I got an explanation about why these why grips are these have been designed. Yeah. How you train with them for different muscle groups because it's all about just holding the grip okay Mm -hmm. exercises don't change it's what you can do to that muscle by utilizing a different approach to the exercises Mm because you have new tools you see every doctor comes to a uh uh, comes to your home or comes to comes to work he got a tool bag he got a stethoscope he got everything open that bag he's got his can you grow so you can grow on this exercise are you sure about AJ? AJ, whoa 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 whoa. stop the press aj i've got an idea yeah I think when we go to the Olympia, yeah. we need to go via Florida, stay, at, stay at Vince's house, we'll bring Chris, he can film us, and Vince can show us every single body part how to train it on his Vince clips. How's that? Okay, it's well, easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but guys, here, since we got there, I appreciate you bringing that up for me. But listen, this is my baby. Yeah. This is what I'm can trying. Tell, this, is, this, this is my reinvention of what I'm doing. Yeah. These, these grips belong to a training system. Okay. Mm-hmm. I created my own training principle. First of all, Joe Weider has his principles. Everybody, Tom Platts, people got bodybuilding principle. Well, Vince Taylor's principle, my principle is, is called joint rotation and recoil. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Okay. It's lightweight resistance training utilizing these grips. Yeah. You have to utilize the type of training motions that I utilize because this is how you actually train. Mm -hmm. The grips are utilized. For example, you're gonna place the uh, you're gonna place the, the grip between each finger. You'll do reps because you understand what you're doing. You're gonna yeah. do reps uh, between each finger, like eight reps between each finger. Okay, wow. you, the, you'll yeah. change them according to how your muscle responds to what you're doing because that intensity builds up and when you're training. Yeah. So therefore, it's not a eight set, three sets, eight reps. No, no, no. This is an open end training. You have yeah. to train according to what you feel to know when you reach the limit of, of what you're looking for in the gym. Very good for injury prevention as well. Yeah. How is your, your tendons yeah. feel probably a lot? Yeah. Uh, well, feel good to be six. Exactly. Be six, because six, you don't three. load them up. I'm not, I don't have because I never trained super heavy. I always train with uh, cables, lighter weight. I try to protect my body rather than brutalize it all the time. Has, like my you have to train hands. like this when you've got tiny has like any, wrists like that. Has any pros <laughs> has any pros tried this system? Have you Yeah. I've been selling them for about a year and a half now. Uh, especially all over the all over the world right now. They're just okay. getting started. Mm -hmm. But um I've given them I got the beauty of this is it's about anybody who's trying to utilize uh uh increasing hand training or if you're an athlete you need better, stronger hands stronger arms whatever mm. dealing with your hands for example i got boxers using these excuse me boxers yeah. tennis players this is just about strengthening the ability to strengthen I, the muscles that you have i think it'd be good for um like rehab you know where you're, you're trying rehab. you're trying to like do like very uh target specific um, lo localized kind of stimulation and where you don't you can't use a lot of weight but you're going to yep. stimulate the muscle maximally now think about that that's the thing that we're trying to look at you look at lightweight and you see how people use lightweight you yeah. look at heavyweight you see what they look at heavyweight and you see what they're trying to get from that mm. they associate the heavyweight with the big muscle yeah okay mm. The weight is just a it's stimulus. a substance. Stimulus. It's what you're doing with that substance. Your body is put in a position when yeah. you're using heavy weight to put in all the contraction, every force of energy, everything you got to do the lifting, the, the explosion right. portion of it. What does that set off in the body mm. that makes the muscle grow? See, that weight indicates a certain type of intensity and mm. contraction that you're going to be able to control. Lightweight resistance training is your contraction that your body is giving you already. You're contracting, you know, isometrically. Mm. You right. can't match that isometric contraction yeah. doing heavier weights and this flow. That also is a step in growth. Yeah. So you're taking these steps of the growth pattern, the chart. This is step two out of eight probably. Yeah. So heavyweight training, utilizing that force. Lightweight training, utilizing that intensity and force. They equalize themselves yeah. in that chart for mm. growth. Plus, so you can qualitize your muscle. Plus, I think with... Um... What was I going to say? Um, with sorry, go on. I completely forgot the question. Now. No, I just want to. <laughs> no, think... no, no. Sorry, the biceps and the triceps do actually. <laughs> right. No, they they're very well stimulated by the peak contract, the lighter weight, the sort of stricter. Because mm -hmm. I remember seeing um, it was a uh, it was uh, London's strongest man, and he was. I remember he was shoulder pressing three twenties and a fifteen, and then he went and trained triceps, and he was doing like a really light cable movement. I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Well, this is the different way to stimulate the muscle." He says, "I do all the heavy so, stuff." Mm -hmm. He said, "But you know, like you're saying, like the heavy stimulation, the heavy weight, free weight stimulation, and then the the the, the lighter kind of strict." Uh, more more specif uh, speci specified you know uh, targeted training through the like the peak contraction cables and you know with uh, right. with implements like yours you know and two you got to add to that age is the fact that you're utilizing the second half of the contraction so everybody goes to, to gym and they start pulling waist and all they think about get that full contraction well the eccentric contraction is the second portion of the contraction that adds to that muscle growth and the muscle changing yeah. it's that internal pulling of the eccentric motion that's where you get more your gains from muscle growth mm -hmm. you see most people are dominant on contraction yeah. i want not, eccentric not that's length, that slow lengthening the muscle stretching. lengthening the muscle there we go yeah, so now yeah. you're adding some more texture to that muscle more mm -hmm. blood fiber more blood flow through the muscle more stimulation yeah. so you're getting a better quality of muscle better pattern fertilization for growth yeah. so that's that light eccentric motion of it last thing before we go uh, don't go you're, man you're, don't go <laughs> yeah i think we're gonna have to get part three how, how, how are you how, how tell me how your training and eating schedule is at this uh, age 63 and please don't um, lie about the Coca-Cola now. Tell us the real, oh, real sure. diet. No. He's, he's on Diet Coke. Oh, he's on Diet Coke. He's well, on he's Diet Coke, 65. really? He's lying yeah. about it. When he's 65, coke. he's switching to Diet Coke. Do you like, do you try, do you ever drink Diet Coke? I hate it. I Have tried you it tried it? it? 
Oh, absolutely. I tried it. No. Even back, I tried it. Well, it. It's very good. You got to try Diet Listen, Coke. It tastes almost it, the same. In Germany, Listen, when I'm living in Berlin and they first came out with that Coke Zero, <laughs> the, to pick that stuff up and, and drink that stuff is like, ugh. No. It's the worst stuff in the world. Diet Coke. Don't that leave that aftertaste on your tongue? <laughs> okay, okay, tell us your current training and diet. Okay. Current training and diet, unfortunately, and I, and I say this honestly, for the last at least two years, mm -hmm. um, I have been, you know, almost inactive totally, you know, uh, as far as training is concerned, because I have a back problem, you know, okay. uh, that's what happened in 2006 after or 2007, after I tried to get back in my second preparation for the Mr. Olympia, I was in the gym, excited now, I did some sit-ups, got the little ping in my lower back, that just killed my whole career. And so all those years up until now, I don't even want to go into the gym. I don't even like training anymore. I don't know how no. I was a bodybuilder, to be honest. So my training has never been the regiment of every day push pull like I would normally do for the last four or five years. It's been go as I please. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's cases where I haven't been to the gym in the last month. And when I've gone to the gym, I've gone twice, Monday and a Friday. Wow. And when I was in the gym, all I did was use my grips and I started doing exercises to yeah. say warm up. I'm going to work from my, my toes to my head. <laughs> Just warm up some yeah. muscles, activate some muscles, and get out of there. You don't miss the and pump for like, nothing? Mm, you know, I don't miss none of that. Do you know what? Do you know what? Sorry, just to interject there. Do you know something I'd love to see? I'd love to see a training video series because recently Barry DeMay went to train with Rich Gaspari mm -hmm. on the East Coast. I, could, I would love to see you training with like Mike Christian. Some, yeah. yeah. The, the problem look, with that would be is how I train. Right. Okay. Yeah, your guys, style of training, isn't it? I, I, my, my style is totally different now. And when I'm yeah. trying to go back in there, yeah. I was in the gym. I'm feeling it because mentally I don't want it. But then when I push myself to go do it, I'm like, okay, let's do this. I go and I'm going to train my biceps today. So now I'm training my biceps to Vince tail away. I'm yeah. going to use a, a bar to start heavyweight four sets to stimulate some stuff just to get some curls going. Mm. Then I go straight to my rack and I use my bands in the middle. So what I do is, for example, here's an arm workout. I start in front of the, 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 my rack, okay, dumbbell rack. I call run the rack. I start with every denomination of weight and I would do eight reps. From the 5, 10, 15, 20, up until as far as I want to go, maybe 40 pounds, and I work my way back down. Right. That is my hammer curls or my mm -hmm. concentration curl. Mm -hmm. Between that, I'll go and i grab these, and I would do in between the finger because now, again, I'm attacking the bicep. I'm not attacking the full bicep only yeah. because I'm looking at that power. That's what yeah. that power grip's for. That's yeah. just power go full. Now I'm specializing going between the zones i want to stay in this zone in the muscle for a while the middle and the outer so i'll do a few sets with this second one yeah. then after i finish that one because now i'm shifting my resistance around heavy to extremely medium light with full contraction then i go back and do a medium set with the double ball set here same concept same zones i'm working same open palm but now i'm positioning the fingers differently holding the ball so i can stay in two zones maybe like the middle and the outer yeah. flip it to this side and i'm on the middle and the outside so I can move it around and hit different zones, and I will stay in those zones for quality training to get that activation going inside mm -hmm. that muscle. So that doesn't take but 30, 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. I'm in the gym. I'm training my arms. Fine. 20 minutes later, I'm done. I'm, I'm done, gone. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> will you be at the Olympia contest? Probably not. Come on. <laughs> we'll drag you there. We'll drag okay. you there. Well, then make us a promise. You watch this Mr. Olympia contest closely from at home, yes. and you come I on shall. our show. And then you give us a wrap up. Oh, yeah. you gotta really, can you do that for us? Study, Wins? study the physique, please. I would try. Uh, no, not my, try, uh, Wins. <laughs> Come on, you mean try? <laughs> Hopefully, I yeah, heard about doing the stream. I, bodybuilding. I don't even. I, I can't even judge physiques anymore. Yes, no, you can. Like, yes, that's you can. the whole thing. You watch the Open Mr. Olympia contest for us, and then you come on and do the wrap up with us next week. Is that a promise? All right, let's do that. Yeah! Oh, good. That is awesome. Good. We're just trying to find ways to get you back on again. Just trying all. to find ways to I get love. you back on. <laughs> Vince, Vince, I yeah. think we're going to have to wrap it up, mate. Yeah. This has been absolutely amazing. I mean, I honestly, please do us, do us a favor, though. Go back to the episode you're on on YouTube and just go and have a look at the comments because I think it'll really, it'll bring a smile to your face because I think you'll see that you're, you're very much loved. And the thing is, there's also the, obviously the 90s, there's the 90s bodybuilding fans who know and, and love 
love you. But there's also this new generation now that are seeing who you are and learning and now also going back and watching your videos. We've, we've been telling them to go back and watch the old Olympias mm. 91, 89. <laughs> so just please do that because I think, like I said, I think it'll, I I think it'll bring a smile to your face. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Especially I hey, especially that shout out I got from Norway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wait, I had to blast that. <laughs> Dude, hey, thank you, brother. Yeah, you're Vince. welcome, you're welcome, Hi. you're welcome. Vince, there's still a lot of love for Vince Taylor in yeah, the world. I think yeah. that's uh, that's never going to go away. So, so uh, where can we get those training equipment again? Last time, where can we get it? Absolutely. VinceTaylorGrips.com. That's the website, and the training videos are on there. I'm getting And if push comes to shove, go to Amazon. I just put my, I just got on Amazon, too. Brilliant. And after Olympia, you come here and do the wrap ups. You got to watch the oh, open crap. Olympia and really study it now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to now. Yeah, yeah sorry. You're under, under strict orders now. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, well, Nor will be angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Vince Taylor. Um, thank you so much. much yes. And um, yeah, thank you for coming back on again and uh, by, by popular demand. By popular demand. And uh, we'll get you on again after the Olympia. So you've, uh, you've, you've, you've spoken it into existence now, as uh, we yeah. like to say. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Vince Taylor, thank you. Hey, so thank hey, you. Try, I'm trying to, try to get that old man muscle ready. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's, still, he's, he's still not that. training anymore, he says. What a liar. You are training. I think you're uh, <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> Hey, it's Sneak. that precision training. I build biceps. <laughs> I'm telling I build biceps. This is yeah. what I do. Uh, all right, then, Vince. Thank you Thank so you. much, right, mate. Brothers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so bye much. Bye-bye. 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 Oh. See those arms still? <laughs> yeah. 63. I, well, I saw a picture on Instagram. He's got to train them more often in these tests. Someone had shared it on Instagram, and it was like, and I, I showed you today, and it was mm. like, it's obviously a recent picture. And he still looks, I mean, he still looks incredible. So it's a shame there's the Masters Olympia's not. Imagine over 60 Masters Olympia. Imagine winning the Olympia, and he don't even bring you this hand out. Well, let's focus on the positives. So, um, yeah. But imagine if there was a over 60s Masters Olympia now four times in a row yeah the last time I saw Vince was at the Masters Olympia in 2012 at the seminar there was him Lou Ferrigno Franz Benfata Rich Gaspari Sean Ray was there uh, loads of them it was fantastic yeah and he was really good and we got, and it, when Dorian was there and when, in fact the, the best my favourite ones were Ronnie and Vince when they got on the microphone they were amazing that were the ones that was the one my friend my friend came with me and she said she didn't really know anything about bodybuilding and when she left she says and she described the two people she liked the best and she said that one guy who says yeah buddy <laughs> and, and, my friend. and she said uh, and she, she described the other guy I said oh that's Vince Taylor she goes yeah, yeah I loved his energy I loved his energy yeah. what a great guy so yeah I mean come thanks on. to Vince Taylor yeah big thank you to Vince Taylor there and uh, yeah so yes yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this latest episode because that was the final interview of Lepo, episode 26 26 26 yeah Come okay An yep. another another epic lineup for guests for Global Muscle Radio thanks to Vince Taylor thanks to um, Joe Seaman Joe Seaman and thanks to the new pride of America Derek Lunsford oh Come Derek on, Lunsford man. of course yeah yeah sorry we cause, yeah we've done, done a lot of filming the last couple of days so uh, yeah yeah Derek well, Lunsford he was good very very good very good another killer episode another fantastic episode of Globe Muscle Radio hope you guys enjoyed it okay and we will see you next week thank you for watching thank you for supporting Ch check us out DM us on Instagram if you want any, any guest requests please give us any feedback for how we can make the show even better and uh, we'll see you next week for Global Muscle Radio. And we, we are, are out. out. <laughs>